You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet. That's a lot of energy. Should I, should I crank that up or lower that down? Perfect. You've, you've nailed Hello, it. Hello, Internet. All so, right. Did it anyway. I hey, get it. What's up, Internet? <laughs> I got to show, I gotta show my, the different I gotta sides. I got to show my range. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at you. This is a big audition, audition for Look like Broadway podcast. You going to play the French horn in a minute? I might. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our uh, podcast <laughs> that we do after talking about Tadpog Prom for... Two hours and 40 yeah, minutes. Yeah, you came over a little after six, and we just talked until, like, yeah, it's like 8.40. <laughs> we needed to do it, I got to take my pills in, like, 20 minutes. It's going to be an interesting show. I'm still, I'm almost done with my Death Wish coffee. <laughs> yes. I don't know what I'm going You're to do. You're coming in energized, man. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Usually, I'm, like, at this point when I'm doing uh, Ross Rachel Green's quiz at the end, but now I'm, I'm already there. I'm not sleep deprived, though, so there is that. Sweet. Yeah, we... Got some good. Melissa's got sleep for the first time, like in a very long time mm. at the hotel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I brought Ambien for her, so dude, man, I'm gonna get right into it with the with the, how great it was staying in the hotel where it's just <laughs> like I'm gonna have sex every morning. <laughs> <laughs> don't have to worry about don't have to worry about a kid. I know that the walls are well insulated in this hotel because you had a party going on and it was just like can't hear it. Damn, okay. If I went out into the hallway, it's like, shit, there's a party going on. But if I went into my room and closed the door, nothing. Nothing. All right. Very weird. But yeah, that's nice to like be like, cool. We both wake up <laughs> we can both wake up about nine o'clock and just have sex in the morning, not have to worry about a kid, and then just yeah. go and have our day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is uh Tad Pog, Tyler and Dave play old games. Uh well, we talk about video games. Is this, is this your first episode? I don't know why you chose this one. If it is for, your for, for real, <laughs> right? I'm glad you did. If it is your first episode, understand. um I meant I was having sex with my wife Nikki, not with Tyler, my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> when I say that we had sex, I meant her. No one can hear me scream. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> Who's screaming? You or me? Uh it's funnier when I'm probably for me to be screaming. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. When yeah. Tyler's screaming. <laughs> <laughs> is it funnier because you think people are like, he'd probably enjoy it. Why yeah, maybe, screaming? maybe, yeah. <laughs> Dave wouldn't enjoy enjoy bottoming. Like, Tyler, he I could, would not. he'd be amused by it. <laughs> he, he might not even be into <laughs> it, but he'd be like, fine, <laughs> fine, stick it in, whatever. I mean, <laughs> I mean, no offense, but for the record, I'm not sure I'm okay with topping either. <laughs> I love you very much. But. Fine. <laughs> but not in that way. Let's. let's, let's <laughs> but it's a real. But one of it was a really funny joke. <laughs> but let's still be friends. Like, like, like it's Ted Bog prom, and like we leave the door open, like it's a party. They walk in, and we're just fucking. It's a real funny joke. The one Ted Bog prom for Time Lord Josh Edwards to miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh, you missed it, man. We were just fucking Bucket. going nuts. If this is your first episode, Time Lord Josh Edwards has uh, <laughs> exclaimed in the past how good, how funny it would be if Tyler and I had sex yeah. on Mike. So. And he is a listener and he has a title because he's a longtime listener and friend of ours. There we go. This is going to be an ongoing bit in this episode where we over explain everything, everything. for everything. our new listener who just tu- tuned in specifically for Foreman. The for person real. who has George Foreman alerts, Google alerts set and this pops up, they're like, hell yeah. All oh right. man, the person who has George Foreman <laughs> Google alerts set up will hate this <laughs> podcast. Because <laughs> like, isn't George Foreman like known for being like a wholesome kind of like dude? Grill salesman? Yeah, a grillsman. <laughs> And a sit sitcom artist didn't he have a sitcom for like a hot minute? I want to say you're right. I want to say he did. It was like him and all the Georges. I think. Yeah, all his kids named George or some shit. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Tyler and Dave play old games. We play old video games. But right now, the jam that we're on is we went down to our basement and created a dark, chaotic god who randomly chooses 
Super Nintendo games from Wikipedia's list of Super Nintendo games. It's kind of like randomly. It's kind of like Full Metal Alchemist. We like tried to bring <laughs> our mom back or something, uh-huh, yeah, and yeah. it's like, nope, you're not allowed to do that. So your payment is <laughs> you have to play through all of the Super Nintendo yep. games in, in a random order. Random order. <laughs> so this week, the randomizer chose for us Foreman for Real. Foreman for Real. <laughs> Didn't make to make your daughter cry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so, and of course, this, we are fresh Did not sell enough? I am for real! <laughs> for, that was funnier, right? I heard the coffee on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I felt the coffee on that one. <laughs> coffee energy down 2%. So yeah, much you, replenished. You have to slowly spend it. <laughs> Build more pylons. <laughs> So we did come off fresh this weekend from Tadpog Prom, which is the yearly event that we, us and fans of the show, all go to the Louisville Arcade Expo together. Right. Do do the Arcade Expo and other events all together as a group, and we have a great time every year. Sure. And uh, shout out to Master Cycle Baron Link. Hell yes. For organizing it this year. Yes. I think he did an amazing job. He did. Thank you, Link, uh, very much. And drove a really fucking long way to be there too. Yeah, he did from Wisconsin. Like there were some, so there were people who really went out of their way to yeah. drive. Of course, like because to celebrate, people who came the the people two people who came the furthest got uh, Ryu hoodies that that I've been saying I have to give away forever. We can so, finally take it off the show notes. <laughs> first time caller Nate from Utah flew in from Utah. He got one. Of course, I pulled his name from iTunes randomly. Uh, he got one, and then whoever drove the furthest, which I believe was Paul Anderson, got the other one. There's a great picture of that in the Tadpog Nation group. Yeah, there is. And so, yeah, like, we have a Tadpog Not page. of him driving. Not of him driving. Of, no, of no. him and Nate in the Ryu hoodie. There's 12 hours of footage of him just driving <laughs> to prom. It's, it's called... Do you like Desert Bus? <laughs> this is like the non-interactive version. <laughs> I think Desert Bus is the non-interactive version of Desert Bus, right? <laughs> you just have to press left a few times. <laughs> uh, George Foreman did have a sitcom called George. Oh. It lasted one season in 1993. Makes sense. And Makes I, sense. And I wish I could have watched it yeah. for this episode. But <laughs> don't worry, I will watch it for his other Super Nintendo game. What's the other one? I think it's called Foreman, Foreman for Play. <laughs> it's Foreman for Play Play, not for real real. <laughs> uh, I think it's called I think it's called <laughs> Foreman for Play where you it's a dating sim where you romance George Foreman. But different George Foremans. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And they're all George Foreman, but they're like slightly skewed a he, little bit. He's like the doctor. Every version, every era of George Foreman step through and you have to romance all of them and it, sleep with every George Foreman. That is how it works. Foreman and, for Play. And that's like that that is what he gets for boxing. He didn't want to do it, but they're like, if you box, you get reincarnated when you die. Yeah. And he's like, sign me up. Who am I going to come back as? Just you, but like a little fatter than you were before. Or, or the only way it works, George, is if you name as many sons as you possibly can after yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you'll you'll become one of them, but they have you, you. It's imperative that you understand they must share your name. <laughs> uh, the other game is called George Foreman's KO Boxing. Hmm. Okay. Which um, I thought about. So keep some George Foreman goofs in the tank. That's what I'm saying. All right. And I thought about sometimes what we do is uh, here at Tadpog, we do things a little bit differently. Uh, I thought about maybe seeing if you wanted to cover both games in the same episode. Oh. Because we kind of do that sometimes. They do have the same uh, developer, I believe. Uh, and the same publisher, and they did come out within like a year of each other. Mm. So I'm like, this the same game, right? And then I checked out the other one, and it's like, nope. Oh, nope. very different. Very different. Very different. Okay, cool. One is one is not to spoil it when the <laughs> randomizer gives it to us. We'll all have forgotten by then, I'm sure, unless it picks it at the end of this episode. But it is straight up a Mike Tyson's punch out rom hack with George Foreman in it, essentially. That sounds pretty good. It sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. But it's probably not because I never heard of it, but it sounds good. <laughs> it's an experience. It was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> very different from this game. Well, before we uh, we do our deep George Foreman dive, I see a package sitting over there. Look Sometimes at- we open packages that listeners that we usually tell an intro story, yeah, not particularly about gaming, yeah, sort of about us, so we can bond with the listeners, show so that we're people, yes, and not just a medium between 
com- computer information about video games to your ears. Right. Not just. We're, we're, we're not people. just that. We're not we just are that. We are that, but also, we're also right. people. We're also people. Yeah. Uh, I do want to open this package. I don't want to forget what uh, we didn't get to You're try right. last time. You're right. When gentle, gentle G gentle sent G's hot sauce and a hot sauce. Which, by the way, speaking of hot sauce and speaking of um, Paul Anderson, who drove a, sh- a long way to get to prom, um, Paul Anderson of the far, far away, uh, he brought a hot sauce. Did you get the? You tried that, right? Oh uh, yeah, I did. Death nectar stretched. Oh <laughs> man, it's in, it's in my fridge right now. Oh, you got it. Okay, I do have okay. it. Because I made sure I brought home a bunch of uh, the leftover liquor, which there was a lot left over. Jo- yeah. Drink Master Joy also took a fuck ton of liquor home. Drink Smith. Drink Smith. Drink Smith. I've had a conversation with him about his title can never change because he got a jersey that says Drink Smith, six, <laughs> number 69 on it. So it is, it is that. That title is in stone yep. as far as I'm concerned. Yep, yep. Or it's at least embroidered. <laughs> You want to try the hot sauce first before we delve into that package? Let's do it, man. Since okay. the, since the hot sauce came in first, I want to give it. I want to give it its. I want to run it through its paces. It's a dark. This it's is a, a chunky boy. It's a dark sauce, which is typically um, a sign that I feel like it's going to be a hot one. Yep. But we read the ingredients on it the other day. Who? who uh, what hot sauce is this again? Aloha, Alabama. Aloha, Alabama. Inferno sauce. Inferno sauce. There's right. no way this is going to be as hot as the Death Nectar. No, it's not. That Death Nectar <laughs> was like, it was hot, but what sucked about it was it lasted forever. It did not go away. You and, were 100% and right. Everyone who tried it, like Joey said, Drinks with Joey said that it was just like a dozen people pacing back and forth <laughs> for like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here All we right. go. Aloha, Alabama. That's sweet. Mm-hmm. And it is hotter than I thought it would be. And all I have is this Death Wish coffee. Oh. Time to drink up, I guess. You got you got NyQuil. You want some of that? <laughs> mm, not yet. Save that for the road. Woo. I felt it when I... Inhaled? It, whenever like my mouth feels that that tightening when it's super hot. Uh-huh. Oh, hiccup. there's a hiccup. That's how you know. Man, this is way hotter than I thought it was going to be. Oh, man. Aloha, Alabama. Woo! <laughs> Damn. If that's as hot as Dave's the insanity. Yeah, I think that's fair. Let me drink this hot beverage. Oh, man. Yeah, I did not expect that at all. <laughs> I didn't either. But when I saw the color of it, it was like, oh, no. This, could, this potentially mm. could be very, very hot. And there were chunks of pepper in it, too, so... <laughs> Yeah. I think it's the ec- extract that makes it so hot. Ooh. You probably know better than I do, but like I've got a theory about like the the um pure capsaicin that we tried on yeah. Patreon, patreon.com slash tadpog. Uh-huh. Um oh. I think that we got a combination of like either like bum pure capsaicin or extract is just hotter <laughs> than pure capsaicin. Uh, uh. You are you okay? I will be. <laughs> Eventually. Ugh, man. What's surprising is I I was surprised at how well you handled the death nectar, which I think is way hotter than this stuff. It was. I feel like the half-life on this probably won't be too bad. No, it's already starting to fade. Maybe the you know, maybe the stretch and death nectar stretch, like maybe that uh, is like Ah, yeah. It's gonna stretch out the length of time that it's you burn. Designed. Yeah. We do have another package here, and this is a package. This is from someone I haven't seen a package from in a long time, nor have I heard from in, in quite a while. Yep. And when I saw the Ziggies, when I saw the Ziggies on the package, I was like, Hell yeah. They're back. This is a package from Tadpog Santa. And there's a nice box, and in this box is a letter. And this letter says, Sup, Tadpog. I haven't read this beforehand, so. Who knows? What's up, Tadpog? Yeah. It's been a while since I've sent anything into the show. It has. So anyway, I recently bought a few anime Blu-rays, and they came with digital copy codes as well. Since I don't need these, I'd figure I'd pass on them. Oh. And then here we go. We got a here's a Funimation digital copy um, for one for you and one for me. Thank you for that. There are a few things on Funimation that I would like to watch. Um, let's see. 
First one is Kaijo. It's a sports anime where they fight with their boobs and butts in an arena on a pool. I've seen it. I've heard about that. Um, I think I watched it um, when we did Supare Osomu. Uh, Osomu. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Squeaky boy. Uh, con, uh, the package deliverer says it's a fucking hilarious over the top show with silly names for the attacks. My personal favorite is quick, quick draw gazongas. <clears throat> Highly recommend for a good laugh. I think it's right up there with Golden Boy for my favorite comedy animes. Um, that is a tremendous claim. Yeah, Golden Boy is great. I I thought that I thought that Kaijo <clears throat> was I thought that it was funny, uh, but I didn't stick with it mainly because it's like. Golden Boy, I feel like maybe it's because it's from the 90s. Uh-huh. Like, Golden Boy is kind of like tame by today's standards. And like, I'd be less embarrassed yeah. if like someone walked in and was uh-huh. like, What are you doing? I'm watching Golden Boy. Bemo, baby. But like, yeah. right, exactly. But Kaijo is straight up like, That's a lot of tits and ass. <laughs> <laughs> which I like, but it's also one of those things where it's like, like, I wouldn't watch Golden Boy around Henry, but I might think about it for a second. <laughs> Kaijo on the other end, not a chance. Uh, uh, let's see. The letter continues. The other one is for Yuri Kama. Yo, I'm sorry, Yuri Kuma Arashi. Uh, a show executive producer Janie recommended to me. It's a pretty trippy show that I thoroughly enjoyed. Don't really have a summary off the top of my head, other than it's the lesbian bear show. <laughs> God, <laughs> you, I love your punctuation of the letter. Every time there's a period, essentially there's a hiccup. By the same director that did my favorite anime, Revolutionary Girl, Utena, which is on YouTube <laughs> legally. I recommend checking that one. I'm going to mute your mic. <laughs> I recommend checking that one out. <laughs> Definitely one of the top five animes. I also included a random assortment of hot sauce. And if I recall, Dave was looking for another one chip challenge to do on a stream. I was. <laughs> if I remembered wrong. <laughs> If I if I remembered wrong, oh well, pass it on to someone else then. You you remembered correctly. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, anyway, keep up the good work. And the last thing I want to say is a pitch for your Patreon. If you're not on the Tadvog Patreon, you should be. For as little as three and one third cents a day, you get a fuckload of awesome content. Been really digging the Piggy Palace episodes. And is signed Jack of Ziggy Moons. Patreon.com slash Tadbog. I agree. Uh, Piggy Palace actual play um, was a lot of fun to do, and Tyler ran a fantastic game. Thank you. Here is the one chip. I would like to do this on stream if you don't mind me taking this. Take it. Sweet. I was thinking of being from this, from the Alabama. (laughs) 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 And I might do – this is like kind of a nice segue – Drex Drex uh, approached me to do like a, a stream to benefit a friend of ours um, who listeners of the show uh, may be familiar with uh, Duke Sithos, aka yes. Duke William. Uh, there is I, I posted on the Tadpog Nation, the Facebook group. Uh, there is a GoFundMe uh, for William. Uh, William has been diagnosed with uh, with cancer. Uh, he has colon cancer, and. Um, He's got a really. I don't want to. I don't want to go into the details because he goes into the details extremely well on that GoFundMe, uh-huh. uh, and it is it is worth the read, uh, and it'll give you the details that I am likely to fuck up just trying to think um, from my memory. Uh, but it's, I met William in college randomly. I went. I was having trouble in calculus and went to a tutoring session. He was there. <coughs> We got to talking, and then the next semester, I had a computer class with him. And then we just became friends. He started watching you stream, um, and he fit in very well. He worked for a while just randomly with John and Ian. He had some classes with my brother Ryan. Like, he just, he just has connected, he just connected all the wires just out of the, out of the blue. He's a great dude. I think the world of him. And, yeah. and it, it breaks my heart to hear about what's happening to him. And I, and I hope he gets the, all the help that he needs. And I, uh, yeah, I agree with everything that you said. Uh, if you, um, and I'm actually going to be seeing him tomorrow. I'm going to take, he's like got a really, really good attitude about everything coming up, which I think is like it really, really awesome. Cause it's like, if I got that news, it would essentially be, well, looks like I'm going to start smoking again. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see any of you. I'm going to be busy smoking. <laughs> right. Sorry. I'm going to be busy smoking, <laughs> masturbating, and playing video games. So <laughs> it's been nice knowing you guys. Not but knowing you, Nikki and Henry. Don't bother I me. My- don't bother <laughs> me. Don't bother me. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, he's got a really good he's got a really good attitude about it, and a good sense of humor about it. I'm meeting him tomorrow. We are going to shoot photos for his uh, save the date. Uh, he's going to do a save the date for the date that the surgery is happening. Oh, uh, okay. So he's awesome. got he's got a plush uh, um, gastric tract that he has ordered, uh, and we're going to shoot that tomorrow. If you are um, if you are interested in um, reading his story or checking out the GoFundMe, he has, and this is another testament to how like good of a good how awesome he has been about like this news. Uh, he's registered fuck my an- fuck my ass cancer dot com. So go to fuck my ass cancer dot com uh, and uh, that'll redirect you to the GoFundMe. You can read the whole story. But the reason I thought about that is because Drex, um, he's a streamer. Drex twenty three. Um, you guys, if you if you watch the Tadpog stream, you probably know who Drex is. We tend to make a lot of inside jokes. Just go listen to our entire five hundred episode backlog, and you'll, watch, under, you'll be yeah, right there with us. Watch all the streams, check out all the Patreon uh-huh. stuff, and then you'll you'll be one hundred percent in the. So note. go ahead and pause here. Go do all that and come back, and you'll really understand. Pause here. Give us two dollars <laughs> on Patreon. <laughs> Uh, and then definitely please come back. Um, Drex, uh, he wants to do, like, he reached out to me about maybe doing something, um, like, on stream uh, to raise money as well. And uh, this One Chip Challenge may be a key component, Kana. So thank you. Just got the idea from that. Um, awesome. Let's see. Kana's also sent Sam Sam Yang two times spicy hot chicken flavor ramen. Ooh. And it has Ooh. an awesome illustration of a fiery bird, a uh, chicken I guess, holding a bomb with a lit fuse. That it, looks fucking nice. Well then this is this is all you, buddy. Yeah, then. yeah, man. It's all you. I love ramen. I do too. You turn me on to that shin black ramen, oh, so which is good. so good and spicy. Sometimes you feel bad paying seven bucks for ramen, but it's I so no <laughs> right. Like I remember, like the first time I was like, "Fuck, this is some bougie ass ramen," <laughs> and then I was like, "Yeah, but it is." I mean, it, it's not worth it, but it is. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because they're like, we put freeze dried vegetables in there. What more do you want? Seven dollars. <laughs> it's it's please. better than McDonald's. <laughs> it still breaks down to like. Two fifty a package, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, we've also got um, a more with cranberry sauce. We have a delicacy. Oh shit! We have a delicacy. Yeah. Some cranberry orange relish, dated November twenty nineteen. Kana Jack of Ziggy Moon's Ha makes the best cranberry sauce I have ever had. No shit. No See, I don't like shit. cranberry sauce, so I can eat that with a fucking spoon. And there you it's go. That good. There you go. Uh, we've also got a bevy of hot sauces. Uh, I love this brand. Uh, Kana has sent this in before. Um, oh, Arizona. It's uh, El... I can't or pronounce Poblano? it. Uh, this is... No, it's El Yucat- Yucateco. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got... Um, Let's see. We've got hot sauce chili habanero. We've got hot sauce chili habanero. One is red, one is green. Mm-hmm. That's good shit. I've had, have had that. We've got... Um, Black Label Reserve Chili Habanero, uh, which is a which is a I have never seen that one before. Uh-uh. You want to try that one? We should you try want, that. You want to get the hiccups again? Uh, I kind of want to wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, how about this? How about we just have one at the beginning of each show? Okay. Uh, then we've got. So I've got hiccups every every episode. episode right? I just want to stretch it out. Uh, we've also got. X X extra hot sauce, uh, chili habanero as well. Damn. All right. I've never. Yeah. Nice. Busting out the real shit. There we go. That's all the hot sauces. This is a nice. It's a nice package. That's a very nice package. Thank you so much. We've got an R four gold package, but I don't know huh. what. Let's. I because I'm familiar with R fours. Uh huh. I've got one. But I don't. Is this preloaded with a bunch of fucking games? What's going on? I do not know. But that's what it is. It is definitely an R four. Um, and then, yeah, that's what that's what this is. Well, this is this the gaming version of the ring he is passing on to us? <laughs> like you pop this into your 3ds, <laughs> and it's like, oh shit. Tom Nook comes out and kills you three days later. And then, I mean, R fours aren't cheap. That's what's the give us some backstory on that one. Yeah, really, we need to know. Uh, and I think this is specifically because the R four I had was pretty much before the 3ds. But like, did this get put in on accident? 
<laughs> Kana, let us know if this got put in. Do we need to ship this back to you? <laughs> yeah, because this does say 3DS, and it's like the R4 that I've got is like Fuck. was before the Hell 3DS, yeah, and you know the old ones don't yeah. work with 3DSs. Uh, and then we've also got uh, I want this real bad a uh, patch, a circular patch that says "Thick thighs save lives." <laughs> But thigh highs are my, are my demise. And then it is an embroidered uh, midsection of a, of a woman wearing thigh highs uh, about to pull her shirt up. It's all yours, brother. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kana. Yeah, hell yeah. That was a great package. Thank you. Yeah, that was. That was really, really good. And also uh, really good to hear from you, too. All right, well, I forgot to start that timer. I'm going to go ahead and start that timer now. Oh, no, I just started the timer. I just forgot in all of my heat haze that I can't remember anything. Between chugging LIT in order to soothe the heat. How you feeling? You don't have much of that LIT left. I'm feeling pretty good, Dave. You feeling pretty good? I'm feeling pretty good. Why don't you come over here and top me, motherfucker? <laughs> it would be hilarious. <laughs> Man, it'd be so funny. It'd be so funny if you came over and let topped me, me. Let me text Melissa and say, hey, come out here. And then like, I'm like, well, fuck. <laughs> Like for her? It'd be so funny. <laughs> or It'd what? be so funny. Like just as oh, just it'd be so funny to watch my marriage <laughs> shatter to pieces. It's not. It, wait. So wait. It's only funny if someone was there to witness it. Oh yeah. Otherwise, it's just no, 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 no. <laughs> Get that out of your mind right now. It's got to. It's got. Someone's got to walk in on it. <laughs> it's like all those videos of like. The dude jerking off in the hotel room with the door like slightly open, so the yep. housekeeping walks in. Yep. Are those real? Those aren't real, are they? Like I know some of them definitely well, are some not. Some of them are definitely real, but some. Do are you probably, think so? I think the ones where they immediately walk in, they're like, "Oh, sorry," like that makes that, sense. That does make sense. But the ones where they're like, "Let me help you out with that." that I think that was one. One <laughs> one dude was like, "What are you doing? I don't know. You want to come help out?" Okay. Like I do remember seeing that. If e-fuck. it was a woman, yeah, yeah fake. Immediately right, right. fake. But it was a guy. A dude? So right. It's like fine. Okay, get, that yeah, might that, ha- that might be real. <laughs> there's <laughs> a good there's an eighty percent chance that's real. I mean, if you're gonna walk in on a stranger jerking off and enjoying him, like you're gonna have to be a dude for that. You're gonna have to be a dude for that. <laughs> what would you what would you do? If you I were doing that, a guy jerking that, off and I'm a housekeeper. What would you do? Whoa, 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 remember, what would you do? Remember the Nickelodeon game show episode <laughs> where they ta- ask kids what they'd do if they walked in on a grown man jerking off in a hotel I'd hit room? him in the face with a pie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where can, uh, where could, if someone else wants to send us an awesome package, where could they do that? You can send that to Tadpog Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. And if you feel like that was an abru- abrupt transition from what we were just uh-huh. talking about, it is because we definitely paused and then we had sex, uh-huh. but we forgot to invite people over to laugh at it. So it wasn't funny. Let's keep it a secret. So we can't even talk about it. It, it wasn't, wasn't funny. Fun. It wasn't funny. <laughs> it was. It almost wasn't hot. <laughs> almost. It was a struggle. <laughs> we had to really work. You had you had to sit there and fluff for a very long time. <laughs> Tyler, this isn't funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, it's only funny. Listen, everyone can see the face. Is anybody coming in here? Um, Come on. I'll call Phil, but it might be a while. <laughs> see, Phil Hawkins is a longtime listener of the show yes. who is known as our Sandwich Pope. Mm-hmm. He rose the ranks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't start out as Sandwich Pope. So when I say Phil, it's an, it's, it's, it's an inside joke, but yes, it's he's, he's a very prolific listener <laughs> who we love very much. Also, for the record, I want to say that no one has given us feedback on us doing too many inside none, jokes. None. That's what it none. feels like. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like somebody must have said something, but no one did. <laughs> <laughs> or they did, but it was four years ago. I'm just addressing it right that now. That has happened. <laughs> right? Yes, that is true. <laughs> It took us four years to ruminate uh-huh. on that's it. That's about how. That's yeah. That's about it. <laughs> uh, let's see what else is going on. Um, I have some real exciting news. Hell yeah! And that is, I got a call from my boss today because I got back from um, Tadpog Prom mm-hmm. Sunday, and today being Monday, I got uh-huh. a call from my boss. And my Did you boss- take off today. Or yeah, work? yeah. Okay. I took today off as a recovery day for sure. Um, I can't, I don't have the luxury of taking Mondays off. My Mondays are the 
busiest day of the week. So um, I was like, I'm fucking going to work. <laughs> yeah, Mondays for me are kind of like a, I mean, they're busy. Every day is busy, but it's like Monday kind of like, because a lot of my clients are easing into the week, that allows mm. me to ease into the week as yeah. well. You know, no one, it's really rare for someone. Wednesday's that, probably your worst day of the week. Wednesdays are pretty bad because yeah. a lot of like publication dates are due on Thursday. And it's like, mm. so it's like a whole bunch of ads at the same time. And then. Wednesday is typically when people remember stuff where it's like, oh, shit, I got that thing Friday. I need the thing. And it's like, <laughs> they'll get in touch. Um, but I got a call from my boss today, and he said, hey, um, are you sick? And I said, no. I was confused. I was like, I was like, what? and here's why I was confused. What? You're right. But, Doubt. <laughs> but here's why I was confused because, like, first of all, I was like, did they not remember that I requested this time off? And yeah. they're like, hey, are you sick, man? Where are you? It's 4.30. Did you like- go to Louisville? We heard there's the coronavirus. Are you sick? That depends. Do I get paid if I'm sick? <laughs> and that is it. Uh, my answer My answer back was, not yet, but we took Henry. I might feel something <laughs> brewing. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I said not yet, but Henry has the flu. Henry has flu a Mm -hmm. and um so i was kind of thrown off because i was like does he somehow know that henry because like (laughs) coronavirus didn't even like enter my fucking Mm -hmm. mind uh until he said how do you feel about working home working from home this week and i was like i feel great about that why i feel like i'm gonna go ahead and start masturbating now (laughs) nikki like you know like uh always sunny where like mac does like the walking like punch thing (laughs) i did that around the room three times (laughs) Nikki was just staring at me like, what is going on? What is this call about? When I lived alone in Louisville when I was going to Sullivan, every time I'd walk from my bedroom to the kitchen, I would do karate moves. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just I just punched around the room three times while I'm having a conversation with my boss. I'm like, yep, sounds great. Sounds great. And he's like, I'll bring the computer. To, I'll bring you your work computer tomorrow. And I was like, all right, perfect. Sounds fantastic. This sounds <laughs> this sounds amazing. <laughs> Wear a mask because I might be spreading it. I don't well, know. That's what I said. I said, I said, like, I mean, if you bring it to him, what are you gonna do? He's like, I'll leave it on your front step. And it's like, okay. Okay, well, I've got to go back to Louisville again next week. Right. So. <laughs> As it turns out. So what I told Nikki was. I hope this works out really well. Where they're like, you know what? Shit's really getting done. But it's what what sucks is, is there's no way it can get more done than I have been doing. And I fucked up real bad. I should have been not doing a good job while I was and there. Then now just be and then way now up. just fucking crank it up to 10. Well, I don't know. Because you say that, but also you're not going to have to go listen to all your boss's stories. Or you're not going to have Firehouse Mondays with Chris Black. Like maybe you will be more productive. Let's, let's stick with maybe. <laughs> you just have to invite Chris Black over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to so be. So, I was hanging out with Dave. I'm going to have to work from home, too. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. that was I a, miss Chris Black. I want him to come back. I've been, he, he wants to come back, too. Um, it's just like. Yeah, I have a good place for him to hang out now as opposed yeah. to the blanket fort. He's got he's got an album that just recently got mastered and like he's uh-huh. been like really into that. But we have been like he's mentioned several times that he like wants to get back and I've told him, Yeah, we want we want yeah, you to come back. Time. So uh Love that's Chris Black. That's in the works. So yeah. sweet. All he, right. He's good. been he's been busy. Good. So what we should do is tell him to come over and record and he walks in and we're fucking <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be real funny. Dave doesn't even have one copy. We're going to be on. draped in the Canadian flag and he'll be like, facts. <laughs> that's, that's an inside joke right. to the Carnov episode that Chris Black was on mm-hmm. for the first time. Canada, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> sex with your friend, think about it. You know, you used to have you used to be able to have sex with your friend on the streets downtown and the Walmarts came in and pulled everybody <laughs> away. <laughs> that's a reference to something that Chris Black said on the Carnov episode. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our weird, weird podcast. Hell that yeah. I'm having way too much fun recording. Hell right yeah, now. brother. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just excited to be uh, working from home this week. Oh, thank dude, you. That sounds so fucking thank good. Thank you, coronavirus. So good. Fucking thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now watch, I'm gonna like have it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to fly to China, so. Yeah, I do. I love that. So I figured, I mean, I got the coronavirus anyway. <laughs> Are you sick? I'm, yeah, I'm not well. 
I mean, I'm just waiting for Donald Trump to send me my uh, coronavirus test kit. So I'll until that happens, I'm just gonna work from home <laughs> just to be careful. But yeah, the owner the owner asked my boss, he's like, Do you think David should work from home? And my boss was like, Not really, but <laughs> I'll ask him. <laughs> so when he called me, I was like, Yes. Yes. So, so now you know you contact the owner directly. <laughs> <laughs> Because your boss is probably like, oh, man, I got all these great stories that I got anybody to tell them to. I guess I'll email them today. <laughs> Do audio recordings. See, like, I still remember that one. Like, you were at work, mm-hmm. and I was at your house, and I wrote that short story about John Turley. Oh, yeah. This was a long, long, long time, time ago. ago. I mean, I wrote, like, it had to be a five-page story about John Turley's journey to Wendy's, but he was so forgetful. It was just, like, his misadventures – and sent them to the wrong email address. <laughs> and of course, Hotmail didn't have a sent function. So it was like, it was irretrievable. Yeah, that's how long ago it was. Yeah. It was Hotmail era. Yep. Well, you want to talk about, uh, you want to get for real, Dave? I do. For real. I am for real. Or I am for eels, as, I, as, I, <laughs> as I've heard it. Very <laughs> pro eel. Yeah. <laughs> I do like eel on sushi. I don't think you do though. I hate eel. Yeah, yeah, because I. Remember the first time you tried it? Yeah, and you guys told me it wasn't fishy, and you lied. <laughs> I, you, guess I, I guess I don't think it's fishy. You lied. It's very, <laughs> but I am also like I don't like fish, so mm-hmm. it was. I knew it was probably not going to work out. I could easily like if I had easy, cheap access to seafood, but like fish, I could be a pescatarian. Easy, easy. If I can give up beef, if I can give up chicken, no problem. I would fucking love it. My sister's beef going, and chicken are just a lot fucking cheaper. My sister's gone vegan. That's like been her uh-huh. thing. We were talking about it when we met up at at Tadpog Prom. I'm waiting for one of the kids to go vegan. Waiting really? For it? Yeah. Why do you yeah. think? I think RCA is going to go vegan. The animal, like the animal angle. Yep, yeah. 100%. That's why my sister did it too. Um, I guess I'm just uh, my heart is cold and <laughs> calloused at the age of 38. Oh, you love animals. You just know you don't eat any of the good ones. I know. I love. <laughs> I do love animals, but it's like, yeah, I will. Eat I will a cow. never eat dog. Right. So we're fine. <laughs> Let's not say never. Oh, never. I mean, for real. Like, I am for eels. Uh, <laughs> like, if I'm, like, if we're. If we're in fallout situation, right, like, if, Clementine be gone. It, yeah. Well, maybe not my dog. Like, I'm going to, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you're going to eat Bella. You're going to eat yeah, my dog. <laughs> not your dog, but I'm going to train my dog, Clementine, to kill other dogs and bring them back to the Perfect. house. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, and she yeah. loves to get out, so she'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> she loves to get out and kill dogs. <laughs> or, you want? Okay, I see what you're wanting to be social. Oh, okay. you want to go? <laughs> yeah, you want to go fuck your other female dog friend for a laugh? <laughs> I totally get. I that. understand. Here you go. Open the door. <laughs> I guess, I guess. Yeah, but see, me fucking you isn't as funny. I don't think it's as funny. Yeah? It's not. It's not. As, it's I think not. it's because you're more physically imposing than I am. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I think that. that. I think that I is why. That. Yeah. <laughs> it's because you're fatter. That's funny. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're, you are. You didn't say that. You are bigger In my mind, than it's me. like, that is funnier. It's funnier to see a skinny guy fucking a fat guy <laughs> than a fat guy fucking a skinny guy. It, it, I get it. It makes sense. It is funnier, but that's not what I meant. I meant because the fat guy's not like wheezing and trying, and he can't like get a hold. Like I get it. You know who else is a big guy? You're on a lot of uppers, and I'm on a lot of downers. This is where we meet. This is where we meet in the middle. That's the theme of this. That's the overarching theme of this podcast. It's a. Don't it's, you meet me in the middle? Boom, boom. It's a very in-depth look at. Um, Mediocre substance abuse, where it's like, yeah, it's just coffee, but it's a lot of it. It's just coffee and alcohol <laughs> once a week, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of it. <laughs> I am ready. I'm ready to talk about Foreman for real. All right. Do you hear that, Tyler? I do hear that. What is it? It's people laughing at us having sex. <laughs> <Are you>? <laughs> <laughs> They're all laughing like Japanese schoolgirls. <laughs> It's because they are Japanese Skinny school man, girls. Fuck, fuck the fat guy. It's how we make our money in the coronavirus <laughs> post apocalypse. You're damn right. <laughs> That's the only way to earn a good it's buck. The only way to amuse to amuse the survivors with with <laughs> sex. Of course, I hear the laughing Japanese schoolgirls, which ushers in a segment that we like to call Dave reads from Wikipedia. Okay, guys, Foreman for real, or as it's known in Japan. You ready for this? I am. It's been a while. People love this. Mm-hmm. Foman Forira. 
<laughs> uh, can I take another stab at that? I don't think I got it. Uh-huh. Fo, 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 amen, fo, riru. There. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a you. Third time's a charm. Why don't you get this, riru? <laughs> <laughs> All right, show canceled. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. (laughs) Foreman for real, not worth checking out. Goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye. Uh, It is a 1995 boxing video game for the Game Boy, Game Gear, Sega Genesis, and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. That is way too many. Featuring George (laughs) Foreman. It is too many. Uh, Did you know it came pre-installed with George Foreman grills in the (laughs) mid-2000s? You need something to do while you're waiting You make your bacon in the morning (laughs) and you play Foreman (laughs) <laughs> do you own a Foreman grill? Have you? Have you I ever? did. I did. Well, my girl. I owned like the did. huge jumbo one, and Jacob and I would make burgers in them our first year of college. It worked pretty well, right? Yeah, I mean, I've never had any problem with the George yeah, Foreman grill. Same. They're I, fine. I, I They're totally a girl fine. In, in college, you had one, and they all we did burgers in them, and all yeah. worked great. It was perfect for a dorm where you're it not really supposed to cook was. in it. It was totally <laughs> like, perfect. No for one a dorm. will know. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, it is this game, not the not the grill, but Foreman for real is the follow up to Acclaim's previous release, George Foreman's KO Boxing, mm. which is what we talked about briefly uh, before. Um, but man, it is a weird follow up because the games are very, <laughs> very, very different. Flopsy, have anything good to say about it? Uh, what I want to do is I want to consult I want to consult uh, Flopsy, aka the Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the SNS Library, 1991 through 1998, by Pat Contry, courtesy of Master Bold Mike. I want to consult Flopsy when we give our final thoughts. It's the bottom, okay? Yeah, we're gonna book in. We're gonna book in this exceptional podcast with Wikipedia <laughs> and Flopsy. This episode that has confused probably anyone Everybody. who's new. <laughs> Or not new. Or not. (laughs) Or has been listening for years. (laughs) Sorry, Phil. All right. Phil and his wife Bulbasaur, who is, I'm sure, confused by every episode of the show. (laughs) If not confused, shame. So confused, she's like, don't use my name. (laughs) Call me a Pokemon. (laughs) That sounds like very specific dirty talk that I'm kind of might be into. (laughs) Like, you call me a Pokemon. Pollinate me. All right, right, (laughs) you. (laughs) <laughs> no, not that one. Ah, fuck, I fucked up. <laughs> that requires a thunderstone. That's stupid. <laughs> okay, Mr. Mime? <laughs> that doesn't even have an evolution. <laughs> Get out. Just pull out. <laughs> it's fine. I came already anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Mime. <laughs> <laughs> So this what? game... Yeah, what do you want to talk about? Okay, so the minute I started playing it, I was like, okay, this is the video game version of Saddam Hussein in South Park. <laughs> yeah, because I guess. Because you see a weird version of George Foreman's unflinching face on a boxing body. But it like mo- when his body moves... His facial expression changes, so it is very much that South Park style. Because yeah. like when Saddam Hussein like moves, that's when his face All right, guys. changes. Right, it is very. We just referenced that not too long ago. Not in too long episode. ago. So the randomizer works in mysterious, mysterious ways. ways. We conjured this. So, but it is weird. It's like a combination of like a celebrity on South Park with their real body on the. The real face on the the cartoon body, sure. And that one episode of, of uh, Sopranos where spoilers. Oh well, no, not here. I'll I'll plug my ears. Okay, where Tony's mom dies and they insert Damn, her it. digitally, <laughs> and it looks super fucked up and weird. I really do want to. I've never watched Sopranos. And I, I'm still. I still have half a season to go. I've never finished it. I, I want to start watching it because I know it's like available on one of the streaming services I have. I think like Prime or something like that, okay. maybe. Um, so I really want to start watching it because on another podcast I listen to, each episode they have a little segment on the the Sopranos episode that came out that week. <laughs> or I could just keep listening to that show and just just catch up. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> it's like I don't understand why everyone loves this show so much. It seems really like yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Visually uninspired. Dr. Melfi just seems sort of flat. I don't know. I, don't I know that it. name. I know that name. Yeah. <laughs> Good character. One of the hardest scenes I've seen on television. Like, it is such a heartbreaking scene with her and Lone yeah. Sopranos. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I know about the guy they brought back um, with them from Italy. I know about him. Furio. Furio, uh-huh. yeah. Know about him. Because my friend John, 
he was notorious for making comparisons. So all of our friend uh, group, he would compare them to other forms of media. Yeah, I'm not a big lover of that hobby when <laughs> I'm involved in it. <laughs> you were definitely somebody. I had to look it up. I, I we no found doubt. it recently. I have yeah, no yeah, doubt yeah. that I was definitely somebody. But he had the, that was the most comprehensive. Well, it and Game of Thrones yeah. were very comprehensive and very, very good. It's, yeah. They're all of our friend group to a ludicrous extent for Sopranos characters and Game of Thrones characters. They're always they're always fun, but it's always a nice exercise in how well John doesn't know me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will concur. Because <laughs> every time I hear it, it's like, all right, okay, man. <laughs> I still don't. I project something different, I guess. I remember I did one with Naruto characters, and you you did not like that I made you Neji instead of Shikamaru. Oh, I should be Shikamaru. <laughs> <laughs> I think I made Josh Nance Shikamaru. I can see you were like bullshit. I'm Shikamaru. I, it's just because I like him better than Neji. But I could see I could totally see Neji. I guess I would make my sister Hanada. Yep. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh man. Uh, all right, Foreman for real. Back to Foreman for Riru. Oh man, this game. This game frustrated me so fucking badly. It's a bad game. Yeah. It's a bad game. Yeah. Um, and I like boxing games, so this one you? makes yeah. less sense than than a normal boxing game. Do you like boxing games, or do you like Punch Out? I like Punch Out, but I also like um, Evander Holyfield's okay. Real Deal Boxing sure, Genesis. Sure. Yeah, that was a. I mean, I like that one. Okay, I definitely like that. Punch is Out closer better. to a boxing simulation than it is like a Nintendo boxing game, like Punch sure. Out Super Punch Out. Well, in this we punch out. Foreman for real looks like it should be a simulation boxing game uh-huh. because everything's like all the fighters are mo capped and they've got like photorealistic faces on the mo capped bodies, and it gives that impression that this should be like a simulation boxing game, mm-hmm. but. It really is a button masher, is what yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's weird because I watched because you were playing. I played it for a while, and I love that you were playing it while I was playing it on Twitch. I, lo- <laughs> yeah. I love it when I love it when people in chat are also playing the game yeah. because it's always more fun to like share in the misery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I started. I just went right into career mode, and there are so many fucking boxers to choose from. There are nineteen made up boxers, I believe, <laughs> and then George Foreman. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> uh, would you like to go through the roster? I would love to go through the roster. As fast as I possibly as can? As fast as you possibly can. Until one's funny, then I'm like, whoa, whoa, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. We got from the top, uh-huh. big George Foreman. Uh-huh. Keith, Hammerhead Glasgow. Nick, the Nightmare Cruiser, who looked like Brad Pitt. Nick, see, Nick Cruiser sounds like it is mocking Nick Bruiser from Super Punch-Out. The final oh. boss of Super Punch-Out. And Keith Glasgow kind of like, kind of like, Kind of like somebody else from Punch Out. Nick Glass, Glass, Glass Joe. Glass Joe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and see, they flipped it though, because because yeah. Glasgow is the best boxer in the game after George Foreman. And George Glass Glass, Glass Joe, Joe is the, is the worst weakest in Super Punch yeah. Out. So I feel a regular like, Punch Out. I feel like they were definitely thinking they were like really clever with that. Yeah. And like, I think the fact that the other George Foreman boxing game is absolutely a Super Punch Out. Rip off like enforces <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, there's also George Stallion's Shawkey, Lightning Lou Janetti, who is pu- uh, is Putin. Like 100 <laughs> percent is is Putin. Like in which makes he's got terrible gas. <laughs> he's Putin. He's Putin. <laughs> it is so hard for me to say Putin because every time I want to say Putin, every P- Putin. Every Putin. Um, Putin, Vladimir Putin, but he is like seriously, like look, like do a Google search for Lightning Lou Janetti. You'll pull, pull up, put nothing. him on a horse, and he's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes, zero results. <laughs> Maybe it is because all these boxers are shirtless. Uh, but he was definitely giving off Putin vibes. Putin vibes. Uh, we've also got Derek the Legend Lee, Quick Draw Tom Robinson, Dangerous Dan Jones, Mike the Anvil Aubrey. Jeff Rockjaw Rianda, Joe the Dragon Hoffman, who is uh, Dustin the Rain Man Hoffman's little brother, <laughs> and absolutely the guy I played as the most. Because, okay. like, all of these characters, all these boxers have these, like, backstories. Like, they've got a full... A lot of backstories. Full bio. That, bio. that don't always make sense no. to their stats. No, you're right. <laughs> because they'll say things like... Um, 
they'll talk about the fighter's defense. And then like, you'll look at the numbers, the actual statistics. And it's like, this guy has like a 17 in defense. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. The next happened. guy who's like a powerhouse with 45 defense and 10 attacks. Right. It's like, what the it's fuck? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> So yeah, it's it's riddled full of that. But I like Joe the Dragon Hoffman because when I was when I started playing, I was like, all right, I just want the fastest dude. Yeah, that's what I want. Yep. I want the fastest dude. And the reason I did that is because um, on the the first exhibition match that I did, I was like, oh, I'm going to be George Foreman. So because it's he's in the game, he's probably the best one. Uh, he hits really hard, but he is slow. Like I mean, you press the punch button and it's just like. Ugh. Like it yeah. takes like a second to like <laughs> land, and it's like I don't want to do this in career mode. I want the fast dude, mm-hmm. and that guy is—he wasn't the fastest, but he definitely um, had a good balance. He had—I felt like he had a good balance. Also, I like Bruce Lee, and he's the dragon, mm-hmm. so it's kind of one of those where it's like that's my that's my guy. He's chili the dog. Chili the dog. Yeah, <laughs> it is like <laughs> if if. Chili Dog from your Call of Cthulhu game was in my uh, in. Uh, so remember from my first <laughs> Call of Cthulhu game about the Son of Sam, where Dave played a character named right. Chili Dog. Chili Dog. Uh, in this game, he would definitely be um, Joe the Dragon Hoffman. So if you like Call of Cthulhu, go back and listen to Son of Sam that series. And then after you're done with that, like they want more of this. What's the rest of this? So you go to Patreon, mm-hmm. give a dollar, you get all the Piggy Palace episodes. All the Piggy episodes. Palace episodes. There's a lot of them. Which like- is part two of four of, of my, uh, my arc in Call of Cthulhu. I'm looking forward to the next game. And I'm looking forward to the game after that. Uh, we've got Willie the Lion Ramos. Yuri Fabulous Fatiman. Which he's who the speedrunner chose when I watch the speedrunner uh, of this game. Ah, okay. Yep. Uh, do you know why he chose uh, Fabulous? I assume because of the because of his power and his defense, maybe okay. because all he did was throw wide left hooks just over and over until he knocked the fuck out of everybody. Okay, so what is you know more about boxing than I do? Which I thought it was a haymaker. There's no option to throw a haymaker, which I think is dumb. What is a haymaker? A haymaker is just. A pure, pow- wide, everything into it power punch, which is super risky. You leave yourself way open to make a big, powerful punch. Okay. So what is what are the other ones? Like so I know a, what a jab a, a, a is. A hook is pretty. What's a hook? A hook is kind of similar. That is you swinging out for more power to make, connect like with their face. So like a baby haymaker. So a jab is just a punch straight, straight forward, forward sure. with your dominant hand. Okay. A cross is your non-dominant hand, which would cross in front of the center of your body toward the opponent. That's a cross. That's okay. a cross. And, and a, then a hook would be a wide swing out. What what if it's a what if it's a hook with your non-dominant hand? What do you call that? Just let, a left and right hook. Okay. All right, gotcha. Yep. All right. Now now I'm with you 100%. Um Man, they like supposedly there's a way to like do special punches in this game. Yeah, because you get the stars, and the, but I couldn't find any instructions to tell you how to do it, even no, on GameFAQs. No, GameFAQs has one entry, yep. and it is for the Game Boy version, even though it is listed as in the SNES category. Oh. And it's like, that's how little people give a shit about this game. Yeah. It's like not even categorized correctly. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's a, it's a game. Yeah, like it looked like there was a lot of potential in this game, but it was completely fucking squandered and just flattered all over the place. I agree. Uh, we've also got Jam and Johnny O'Grady, Carmen mm-hmm. Fist Paradiso. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they call me Fist. They call me Fist. <laughs> what hobbies do you enjoy? <laughs> Why do you smell like that? <laughs> they named a robot after me in a Fallout. What's that, Fisto? <laughs> Uh, Eric the Kid Wilson, JJ the Bull Mazo, mm-hmm. Jimmy. He'd be Jimmy. Like, see, that's a reference in my Piggy Palace game where Dave plays Jimmy the Bull. Oh shit! Um, it's a classic name, mm-hmm. classic first name. Mm-hmm. Starts with R. Rutherford. 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 Do you know why? Because uh, Rutherford was the name of another one of your characters in D and D, wasn't it? Um, I like. Well, I do. Yes. Or a familiar. Very, maybe? very, very briefly. But Rutherford is like. You're, the, oh, your favorite president. Yeah, Rutherford B. Yeah. Hayes. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, nailed it. Um, I like to play. And Chili Dog is uh, my second favorite president. <laughs> <laughs> Ch- Chili, Andrew Chili Dog Jackson. Chili Chili Dog B. Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rutherford is like the, the, the origin of the name is essentially like a cattle keeper. So it's like Uh, Jimmy the Bull Bull Rutherford. Rutherford. So it's like, all right, that works. Uh, 
Um, Savage, Sammy Swift. Beat my ass the first time I played against him because you pick your opponent, which you, is weird. It is weird. But see, it also kind of makes sense because Savage, Sammy Swift, is like ranked higher than the other two you could choose to mm-hmm. fight. Uh, Rob the Killer Jones and Ahmad Axeman Williams. So I think the first time I chose to be Yuri and fight um, Yo, Axeman! Savage. Yes. And he beat the fuck out of me. Well, like, yeah. No. And I went into career mode, which is more difficult than exhibition because your stats. In exhibition mode, your stats go up to where you're kind of even with the other person. Yeah, everyone has set stats. Mm-hmm. That's not the case in career mode. No, not you at all. You start out like at the fucking at the, bottom with horrible stats that like never raise. They do raise, but it's like by one point. Like it, meanwhile, it feels your arbitrary. opponent's like thirty higher yeah, than the next match. Yeah, and it is like I don't know what they intend for you to do. Do they? Are you supposed to like? grind on those same boxers for, like, hours? Yeah, you should be able to, like, with your winnings, pay to train and raise certain stats. You you do get money, and when you win a match, even if you lose, you get a little money. Yeah. But you don't can't do anything with the money Nothing that I could find. It. Nothing with yeah, You're right, I could find anything to do with it either. It's just, it's like, essentially dumb. a score. It's points. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking stupid, because it's, like, w- what is crazy about it is... Like so many, I got okay. So I played career mode for a, a few hours, a couple hours, and it was like I got to the point where it's like I couldn't knock a dude out. Like it wasn't fucking happening. Nope. Cause I it's was like, never able to. I don't have the offense. I don't have the power to do it. What I would do is win matches by like just getting a higher percentage of punches hit and yep. not get knocked out. Like that was my goal. Don't get knocked out. Fight technically better. And guess what? That's not fucking fun, like, at all. It's not. That's not fun at all. That might be how, like, real boxing is. I don't know. That's how Floyd (laughs) Merriweather wins all of his fights. But that is not fun. Yep. Yeah. Because I remember the first time I played, I got my ass fucking beat. The second time I played, I changed to the dragon, and I was doing okay. Uh, And in my button mashing, hit reset, had to go in again, start the match all over. Third match, like, I am landing... So many fucking punches. Like, I'm 500 punches deep. 70% hit. Like, I'm just... Because you get them in like a jab loop. Sure. Where you're sitting there just punch, punch, punch. If you time it right, you can just jab over and over and over again. Yep, and you don't have a health meter. No. Like, a lot of boxing, you have a health meter. And then as it goes down, your boxer will appear more beat up. Right. Makes sense. Right, don't have that. Don't have that. You have a stamina meter. Yeah, yep, you have a stamina meter. And you press pause... To fucking go to a separate screen to kind of get an indication of where you and the other boxer are in yes. a 3D model. They show you a wire mesh frame, and it's quartered off into, like, left side of the head, right side of the head, left body, right body. And it's, like, it's either green, yellow, orange, or red. And if it's red, it means that that part of the body is super damaged. Yep. And I don't know. They I don't s- necessarily show that in the boxer not very at, well. Not at all. Uh, unless you turn out, uh, turn on red out mode. And then it's like, oh, virtual boy. Right. Okay, yeah. perfect. As you get closer to being KO'd, the screen gets more and more red, which is I turned on because it's nice to know, right? Yep. Like it's shit, I am in trouble. But it also sucks because everything is red and it is hard to see <laughs> yeah. the other boxer. Yep. So it's just like, fuck, I don't know, man. It's it's the interface is fucking terrible. There should be some other kind of indication, energy meter or something. It's fucking dumb. It is very, But very I dumb. remember I was beating the fuck out of this guy. Right, 500 punches He beat, was sorry. super slow, so I would just block. Get him in that loop. Over and over, get him in that loop. Like, we're on like the third ground. I managed to knock him down one time and he got up. And then like, He's just hardly had any any hits on me, and then he just punches me, and I fall down. <laughs> KO. That's it. Like I have dominated this guy constantly. Done. Like I was like, all right, I have never played this game ever again. I am absolutely done. You're done. done. It did. Uh, there is one real big positive that came out of this game. Yeah, and that is I learned how boxing is scored now. I never oh, knew. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know either. I never knew. I, know I just either. thought you went until someone was knocked out three times. Yeah, but- essentially, you know. <laughs> Uh, but that's a TKO, and that has to happen in the same round. Yep. Uh, but I had no idea that essentially it's like there are judges, and yep. they're like, you got a 10. You did real good. You boxed real good. 10. Uh, you didn't do good. Nine. You got knocked. Uh, so I don't know. If, like, I, I, when I said I know how it scored, I, I You sucked real it fucking bad. Eight. Seven. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I didn't know that either. I remember seeing that, but I didn't understand that until watching your stream. And I think it was uh, 
Rhythm Master Paul Korn, who was like, hey, this is what this is how this yeah, works. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, and then uh, Soul Sister Yarn Sorceress Chandra, she uh, dove into the Game Boy Game Fact. Ha. And uh, to k- kind of try to help shed some light on how these statistics work in the mm-hmm. game because they are they are weird. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question, and uh, ask you, away. you can tell me w- what you think does what. Power offense. Well, power is how hard you hit, and offense would be how likely you, you are to land a blow. Maybe that's what I assume too. Yeah. The game fact uh, gives an answer, but it's also nebulous. Like when the game fact is like, uh, essentially that, but I, I feel like there wasn't a lot of confidence behind it. Um, what's the difference between defense and stamina? That one's pretty. That one's pretty self explanatory. Defense, you know, how many hits you can take. Your stamina is how long you can last throwing punches. And each punch takes stamina, but a jab pretty much takes none. So yeah. even if you have no stamina, you can just keep jabbing all day long. Yeah. But if you want to do like a um, if you want to do like a cross, or if you want to do another fancy punch mm-hmm. with a fancy name, you can do an uppercut or things like that. Yeah, then that uses stamina, and then once your stamina bar is full up, you're just back to jab city unless you dodge and block long enough to get your stamina. And back other up. than a jab, it's hard to tell when you even really land a good hit, except for the sound. Um, is it, ooh. Yeah, they do make a sound when they get hit, but I agree. Visually, it is very difficult mm-hmm. to tell. It's and it's even more difficult to tell when you've been hit. Yeah, because by default, uh, the camera is behind you, the boxer, your boxer. Uh, but you can change it if you want. You can change it so that the camera is back behind your opponent, which is very disorienting. Uh-huh. Like I mean, it is just like that's how I boxed. Is that really so how I you did see, it? So I could see my face. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you wanted to see your face? I, the the I felt like I wasn't getting a good impression very well. Like I could see the recoil when I hit the opponent's back. So that's how I that's how I did it with more success. Interesting. I'm glad it worked out for you yeah. because I thought it I thought it was really weird. And then I think uh, I think it might have been uh, Zalnop in chat who pointed out that it's probably like it's probably something that was done for two players. Uh, there but, is a two-player mode, but yeah. for whatever reason, it's also in the single-player mode. Yeah, and then you can also choose switch. So it's yeah. like you start out camera behind your boxer, and then start next out round. you fucking me, and right. then then I start fucking you. So yeah, we all know what, we all know what a switch is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Versa- versatile mode, Enga- versatile mode engaged. All these boxers are ambi. Speaking of ambi, I learned this this uh, this weekend that. Bovon Bear, Matt Cowan, uh, ambidextrous. Ah, well, that's a that's a good. Which he is a twin talent. and want to be different from his from his brother, so he's ambidextrous. <laughs> he learned it. He learned it like Leonardo Trained da Vinci. It. Naturally left handed, learned to use his right hand. Which I'm left handed and leaned hard into that. I am extremely left dominant in everything. Yeah. Uh, I do think the sound in this game is good. The I, sound? I, yeah, I do okay. think I do think the sound in this game is is well done. Mm-hmm. Technically, I think it is well done. I think that because there are voice samples in this game that I think are really really good. Okay. Like when um the game starts out Foreman for real, and it's like I can understand that. Yeah. And uh, that's that's impressive. Sticky D. All Sticky right. D. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a reference to our Street Hockey '95 episode. Everyone knows that one. You don't have to explain <laughs> that one. Everyone knows that one. Um. That is, I don't know why I'm so proud of that street hockey episode. I don't think it's like a super great episode. Probably the worst game. I think it's a good episode over the worst game we've ever played. I think it's a good episode. I don't think it's a great episode. Mm. But yeah, I think probably it is because it is the worst Super Nintendo game that I've ever played. I'm with you. I'm with you. It is. Wor- it definitely. It is leagues worse than Foreman for real. Oh yeah, leagues. Yeah, worse. yeah. I I played Foreman for real for like three hours, and it's like. Yeah, I watched. You seem like you kind of got into it a little bit. It was. It was. Oh, it wasn't fun. <laughs> but it was also not fun. You know what I mean? Like it was. It was less than mediocre. Yeah. It was less than mediocre, yep. but it was bearable. This falls into the bad category, it but not the it, awful category. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, Street Hockey 95 fell into the worst <sighs> category. That's an F. This is a D. This is a D game. D plus. I give, D this, plus. One, I give this a D okay. plus. I know we're not into it yet, but okay. I, I give it a D plus. All right. Uh, I have a feeling that there are way worse boxing games. <laughs> Probably. We'll see. 
like <laughs> like the like the Foreman boxing game that <laughs> was before this one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I thought the sound was good. Uh, and like, yeah, the beginning when it's like Foreman for real and it's like, okay. And then, uh, you see George Foreman, like in a very, like they're trying to do 3d, like it's, you know what I mean? They're like, we're going to make a, we're going to have a 3d rendered, like boxing gym. And, uh, it's, it's all going to be pre-rendered though. See, I would have much rather this been like 70s, 80s, George Foreman, whenever he would like did a cameo on Sanford and Son cuz I'm used to Did he do cameos on Sanford and Son? He did. He was like I was used to bald large yeah. George Foreman. Yeah, me that too. That is who George Foreman was. Yeah, of course. I saw him make a cameo in Sanford and Son and it blew <laughs> my <laughs> fucking mind. <laughs> he had an afro and a mustache and he was super thin and trim like he was an Olympic gold medalist like back in the day. I did not know that. He is George Foreman like Okay, Muhammad Ali might be one of the best boxers of all time. Doesn't have the best record, but one of the best boxers of all time. And he was on Candid Camera a bunch. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> Behind, like, but I think George Foreman stands a very, stands a very close second. If not, maybe, George Foreman might be one of the best boxers of all time. Because he, I mean, Olympic gold medalist and had such a long fucking career. A mind-blowingly long career. Like, he started in the late 60s and was boxing and winning in the 90s. As just what looks like a fat old man just fucking beating ass. Like yeah. George Foreman is fucking amazing. <laughs> All right. I didn't know I didn't know you had such a passion for George Foreman. I love this. See, I just I I don't And you didn't, you didn't even see a sitcom. That's true, I didn't. <laughs> but like, I mean, I grew up watching boxing and I hated it for the most part because dad made me watch sure. it. Sure. But I developed somewhat of an appreciation for it. So what you're saying is that all of that training was for this very moment. It's for this episode. Right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> it pays off right it pays now. Pays off now. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, I never my dad liked to watch boxing too. And that's like one of the reasons I remember like that was one of the big reasons that we that we got HBO when I was a kid. Because mm. they used to do like the box they used to show boxing on HBO, yep. you know? Um and then it's like, oh yeah, they also have movies with titties in them. So that's 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 where <laughs> I'm not a bunch of Cinemax, but sometimes. Right. Yeah, don't worry, we'll get Cinemax later. Because I think I told you, like, cause my my youth was my dad working in the garage painting cars, and I'd be playing Nintendo indoors or having to go pick up sticks or play outside. You'd hear the door in the evening. Yep, <laughs> we'd have dinner, and then after dinner, Dad trips down to just his whitey tidies, gets in his in his uh, lazy boy. Watches boxing. He pours a glass of milk, reg like skim milk. Yeah, and then takes a few pieces of Wonder Bread, white Wonder Bread, shoves them in that glass of milk till it's all just soggy. Eats that with a spoon. Watches boxing. That's really gross. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't like. I don't like that. I didn't like that at all. I like like, that, like, yeah, imagine. I remember that Ryan and I in the hall, just like this is fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he do this? <laughs> I wonder what my I wonder what my son is gonna like. Can we watch something funny? No, <laughs> <laughs> boxing. <laughs> Which I do love watching, like good classic boxing matches, yeah. like ones that you know are fucking good, like classic, really good. There is really something to watching a good boxing match. What's a like? Do you have an example of like what is like the best one to watch? Oh man, it because it's so like what the fuck is going on between uh, Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas? Okay, so Mike Tyson is like the best boxer of his of his era. Mike Tyson is God. If you go back and watch compilations of Mike Tyson box, it's just like holy shit, this dude was fucking un. Real. I've watched Mike Tyson compilations, but they have not been of him boxing. No. <laughs> <laughs> They've him. all been like crazy shit Mike Tyson has done. Yeah. Like I've watched so many of those. Where it's like I have no idea how he yeah. boxes, but that dude said some crazy shit Mike, after Mike fights. Mike Tyson boxing in his prime is a thing of wonder, and I'm not even kidding. Like it is just like it is no wonder this dude dominated. He is clearly incredibly talented at this sport. Um, and you see him on top of his game has just the, he's the heavyweight champion of the world. Like, well, I mean, little Mac beat him. Like a little Mac beat him. <laughs> I mean. And he's like, I mean, he got the video game just thrown after him because right. like, he, was he was so, so popular, intimidating right. sure. and he punched like, I remember like reading about just like his punching power was so unbelievably high. Like he was just an incredibly 
agile, fast, and his heavy, heavy punches. Motherfucker punched like Goku. Like, he was unbelievable. And then he fights. Thanks for bringing it back for me. You're right. <laughs> and he basically takes a sandbag match against Buster Douglas. Guy, a sandbag match? I mean, it's nothing. It's got. A, it's a win. Like he's just coming in. He's gonna get a bunch of money. He's gonna win. Right, People he's, are paying him. He's playing the easy team at homecoming. Kind Ex- of. Okay. Exactly. All right. But he has the worst boxing match of his life, and Buster Douglas has the best boxing match of his life and Buster Douglas beats him and becomes the heavyweight champion of the world and loses it the next boxing match like he's just fucking no was it no way was it fixed no just an incredibly huge upset but it seems like a thing that right like doesn't that like raise suspicion I mean it could be I mean he was so good and so on top of his game yeah and of course then ever he was convicted of rape went to jail and after he tried to come back after that and he just didn't have it anymore. Come on, man. Hangover. Hangover got him back in pop culture. Comedically, he had it post-rape. Yeah, right. But boxing-wise, <laughs> boxing, not, not at so all. Much, right. Not at all. <laughs> then so that's had... why, like, Evander, Ho- Evander Holyfield, he couldn't send him to Holyfield, bit his ear, like the whole, right. the whole big thing. Yeah, I do remember that. Holyfield right. was also an amazing boxer, but, yeah. He was the real deal, I hear. The real, real deal Holyfield. You're right. What about Riddick? Uh, Riddick Bow is probably my favorite boxer. Yeah? Yeah. I love Riddick Bow. All right. I just threw the name out because I almost knew it. I was like, br- I think I said you were Brittic. there. I said, you were there. I said Brittic. Brittic. <laughs> Brittic. I, was, I got you. I got. I got. I got. And I remember, um, I remember the controversy over. I think it was Tommy Davidson. He was um, a really Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson, <laughs> the boxer. I remember Tommy who um, when he fought Ariana Grande. <laughs> Pete Davis' uh, stand-up special on Netflix is pretty I've good. Heard, I've heard it's good. I and haven't he, watched it he yet. He delves into like his relationship with Ariana Grande a little bit, and yeah. it's pretty good. It's... I'm watching it tonight because I'm working from home tomorrow. But then, but Tommy, <laughs> uh, I think it was Tommy. Was, Tommy Davis is the comedians. So maybe I'm not thinking of the right person, but Tommy something the boxer. Um, white boxer, which you don't really see much nowadays, but he was like, I feel like he was the last talented white boxer. He was doing really, really well, but contracted AIDS. And it was like... All right, boxing career is over, which is un- just heartbreaking. He was very, very good. They, yeah. did that, they did that whole AIDS thing really seriously. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's no coronavirus, right? <laughs> Couldn't he just box from home? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I'm kind of. I knew that you were. I knew that you were definitely more into boxing than I was. Uh, but I didn't. Know. It was more forced upon me. But, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that you knew. Like, yeah, I didn't know you knew all this stuff. Yeah. It's cool. Butterbean is another boxer that's very, very entertaining to watch. I've heard of Butterbean because Butter- that's a name that sticks with you. Butterbean, I feel like, had to be the inspiration for uh, King King Himbo because <laughs> he's huge. He doesn't have a ton of stamina because he's huge, but motherfucker knocks people out. Did he ever wear a comical a comical bandage on his belly button? <laughs> He should have a little crown. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but I do think that I do think that the sound sampling was was really good in the game. I, I like the voice sampling was good. I they had a lot of things that were thrown in there. I do think that the choices weren't super great. Like um you hear like an old timey sounding guy go programs. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of weird. I thought, uh, but I do love that at the beginning of the match, you do hear the let's get ready to rumble. And mm-hmm. it's like, all right, that's good. I like that. <laughs> I liked hearing that when I was a kid. Um, I, they go into like, uh, I guess someone's selling something that's ice cold <laughs> or you do something that's ice cold. I don't ice know. Cold ice cold pretzels. <laughs> uh, you do hear someone say, uh, Hit him! Because <laughs> <laughs> the audience reaction is about the same as for Punch Out, where it's just like the same four sprites copied and pasted everywhere, just sort of moving back and forth. Yes, and what's hilarious about it is the boxers are all photo realistic, like motion capped, and then the audience yeah. is just two dimensional, <laughs> two frame. Like yeah, yeah, like <laughs> like, and it's like okay, they just loop it, and it's like. Also, it is like, yeah, they got like four sprites and they just repeat. <laughs> One of them totally looks like Bill O'Reilly. So check that out. <laughs> and I guess did Gold's Gym like sponsor this game? It or must something? have because it's posted everywhere. Yeah. Because in the exhibition, same way match, Pizza Hut sponsored Turtles, Gold's Gym sponsored this boxing game. It's a, it's a weird one. 
So I don't know. Um, that that was definitely in the exhibition matches. Like in the in the career mode, it's just the acclaim ring, you know. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, it's straight up Gold's Gym. <laughs> They paid us two hundred dollars, yep. and we put this in the game. <laughs> we might make that much off this game. I am curious what the sales were like on this game. They're not good. Probably not great. Yeah, I did look for it at the expo when I was there. They didn't have this, but they had the predecessor, which man, I wish I would have picked uh, up. Ah, yeah. Um, just because I played it on the flash cart on at the end of the stream, yeah. and it was like, oh boy, <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> So, yeah, it's bad. I don't even know what the ending is. I never got close to George Foreman. Fuck all this. Fuck all this. Play Super Punch-Out. Play Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing. I don't know. Box? Don't play this. Actually, <laughs> go box. Go, like, go yeah. get hit in the face, and it is a better time. All right, Tyler Durden. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know how the game ends. Like I don't know how career mode ends, but each fight it ends with you like doing a fighting stance in front of the worst animated American flag in the history of American flags. Again, because it's like a it's like this contrast thing where your dude is like your boxer is like photorealistic, and then there is this MS paint like fucking American flag that waves like through three frames of animation. Yeah. And it's huge <laughs> in the background. Uh, and then they take your photograph, and you see, um, I guess, a still shot from the fight in um, Ring News. Ring, Ring um, News. I love that. Love that publication. Ring News. And sometimes it fucks up. And my favorite one was Ring News, and it's like um, Hoff- Hoffman takes it, and then there's a photograph of an empty ring. <laughs> you he just see really he stole this ring have you seen it you just see eight bill o'reilly's in the background <laughs> we've all been charged of sexual assaults <laughs> fuck it <laughs> we'll do it live so that's pretty much it there isn't much music in the game because they don't mm-hmm. play music when you're fighting um nope. and there are no scenes where your trainer follows you in a car while you're running in front of it uh, sad there is a trainer though i'm glad i said trainer that yeah, brought back the memory yeah, yeah yeah it's just like a dude who looks like he's like the the uh general manager at an office depot he looks like sheldon adelson who is like a uh young a, sheldon a billionaire donor <laughs> and yeah he looks real bad and he is literally it might just be the way that his body is but he looks like he's shrugging like it doesn't look like a dude like who's oh, confident. Oh no! Right? He's like, uh, this is literally from mix the mix up your punches. <laughs> yes, right. It's like literally from the game. Like uh, one of his pieces of advice is try jabbing. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Uh, hit him. Have you Just tried? Try have you tried hitting? Have you him? tried hitting him and then not letting him hit you? That's really the key to it here. It's pretty much boxing. <laughs> it's simple. Because the the speed run I watched where they would basically. We, you know, because you can back up and back forward. So they would back out a step, so a punch would miss them, and immediately step in and throw a uh, a wide right hook, and then do that over and over again. And after like a few punches, boom, they were knocked out. Did that over and over until TKO, and did that over and over and over and over again. All they ever did. How long? I didn't watch the speed run. How long did it take them to get to the game? Do you remember? <sighs> I don't remember. Okay. And they did it. Was like career mode. Career mode. Yes. I guess that's all I have to say about the game. Hell yeah. Got any achievements? Uh, I do have some achievements that came in from from Twitch chat. Uh, Thank you all for submitting these. Uh, Here are my favorite ones. First achievement I've got comes in from Usurper Grimm. Have you heard of him? Oh, the guy who usurped? Yeah. Yeah, that guy. Uh, This achievement is tub thumping. In order to unlock tub thumping, you need to get knocked down, but then you get up again. Which does pretty much just happen when you get knocked down. You do get up again. If you press yeah. the buttons real fast, Yeah, <laughs> that does happen. So uh, in order to unlock that, uh, I've well, got... That was probably, probably my problem when I got knocked out because I didn't know which button to press. Nothing seemed to work. I pressed all of them. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to try. I'm going to... That's probably why I kept resetting the game. <laughs> yeah. I would do that. Oh, right. Yeah, because you're playing on a Pi and yeah. there's a combination that'll reset the game. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, I did an experiment where it's like, do I even need to touch the buttons? Uh, you do, you do, you do, <laughs> need, you do need to touch the buttons. I don't know which ones you need to touch. Um, next achievement comes in from Zeus the Goose. Love the oh. name. Love the name, Zeus the Goose. 
Uh, and this is chronic traumatic encephalopathy. In order to unlock chronic <laughs> traumatic encephalopathy, you need to win a match with nothing but repeated headshots, rattling the brain violently until swelling overtakes any rational thought process in your opponent. <laughs> yeah, boxing. Boxing. <laughs> uh, and then the last achievement that I've got comes in from Sandwich Pope Phil. I'm sorry, Miss Foreman. I am for real. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done luck. I'm sorry, Miss Foreman. I am for real. You need to defeat George Big Boy Foreman. His nickname was Big Boy, right? He was big. He's male. It makes sense. Whatever. I like the achievement name. Come up with something better. <laughs> I don't have anything better. That's perfect, Phil. All right. Love it. Do Love you, it. Tyler, do you have any achievements? Um, That sounded like a no. <laughs> the, the dragon falls. Lose as the dragon to a KO. Oh, you could do a you could do a um amass a certain amount of treasure as the dragon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rocky three. Play as Yuri, the Russian boxer, and lose. I've never I've never seen a Rocky movie. Really? Yeah, I've never I mean, seen they're, a Rocky movie. They're, they're good. That's they what are I hear. Very good. I hear that some of them are very good. I still I think <laughs> honestly I think they're all pretty good. Really? I think they're all I've heard pretty good. I've heard tales of a robot butler. Oh yeah, that it's good. <laughs> Is it like Johnny Five? Uh, it's more like need input punch. <laughs> it's more like Screech's robot from Saved by the Bell, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of like a proto Urkelbot, really, if you yeah, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I've seen I haven't seen the most recent Creed movie, but the first Creed I saw was very. Oh good. man, I heard yeah, I heard it was good. I haven't yeah. seen it. I didn't know they made a second one. Yeah. That was it, this one wasn't about the band. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tangentially. <laughs> Tyler. Yes, Dave. I've had a lot of fun. Melissa also told me we were driving back because we in the episode last episode we talked about the the five star review where somebody complained about how we lower our voices. For Tyler. This. Yes. And Melissa was like, I was weirded out the first time I heard that, <laughs> but I would have never made a comment about it. But I'm glad someone else did. <laughs> Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game mm-hmm. Foreman for real. Mm-hmm. A beard that sums up how you feel about it. What kind of beard would you give it? And it's done to unsettle you, by the I, way. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why it's done. <laughs> I would give it's a transition. It's a transition period. Uh, yeah. I would give this the motion of 70s to early 80s George Foreman shaving off his mustache to become the completely sleek, bald George Foreman we know today. Nobody knows what it's like. That's what I imagine is playing as he's shaving his mustache off. <laughs> George shaving his mustache. Yeah, did he just decide, like, if the hair's... Because I assume the hair just kind of... Did it must the, be. Did so the hair like, thing and It's all out. going away like, then. Yep, all, all of it. Alopecia route it is. Chest, <laughs> chest belly, head, yeah, all of it. face, all of it. <laughs> Man, he started turning me on at the end there. <laughs> Chest, face, neck. Oh, God. <laughs> Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses mm-hmm. that sums up how you feel about it, what kind of glasses would you give it? I would give this the pair of glasses worn by Charlie from Street Fighter whenever he loses a match, and they're all crushed and broken from repeated facial blows. Fucking Nice. <laughs> What a fucking nice! I don't think I've ever liked. I, I it's been a long time since I've heard of glasses where it's you, like you generally yeah. suck with your beards and you, glasses, but that was all right. I just said glasses. You're really on just with glasses. your beards. <laughs> I can tell you think about beards more than you think about glasses, I mean, I got which a makes beard. sense. It's only natural. Right. It does totally make sense. But wow, that is a good. I don't think you've given a. I don't think you've given as good a glasses since you did like um, the windshield. That <laughs> those are no, no. Those are those are glasses. Uh, I believe it was the glasses from uh, Major League. <laughs> Charlie Sheen's glasses from Major League. That was the last one I like. feel like I really clicked with. Man, that's, that's such a good pull. Holy both, shit. Both glasses from a character named Charlie. Oh, well, or an actor. Or an actor. What was his Someone name? Someone named Charlie. What was his name in Major League? Fuck. I don't remember. Fuck. Wild thing. He was a wild thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I assure you, uh, Laud Mulaney Dennis right now is screaming <laughs> Charlie Sheen's character's name right now. I've gone through a What's lot of Rick, lead trying it? to... It might have been Rick. I don't think it was Rick. It might have been Rick. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine someone Rick yelling. Rick Glasses. Rick, <laughs> Rick Glasses? Rick Wild? <laughs> Rick Glasses is definitely going to be my new Steam name. <laughs> 
Tyler. Yes, Dave. How much do you think this game was? How much do you think this game goes for loose? Four dollars. That's a good guess. That's a really good guess. Tyler, actual retail value of four men for real loose for the Super Nintendo on average, according to PriceCharting.com at the time of this recording, is three dollars and seventy nine cents. You were very, very, very close. Mm. Uh, Want to take a stab at how much it is complete in box on average? Thirty-five dollars. Fourteen dollars. Damn, that's kind of a steal. I would definitely for a new game. Yeah, I would def- right. well, I, well that's complete right. in box. New is uh, uh, thirty-three dollars and seventy-four cents. Right. Still not <laughs> bad. Not bad. <laughs> uh, do you think it's worth it? No. Well, for a collector having the complete in box or the new, yes, a loose copy. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> Only if you're a collector and you like have to end things in box, is it worth it? I don't know, man. This game. It's, it's a D-plus game, but it's like, I don't know, $3.79? It's $3.79. I give $2 for it. Yeah, that's fair. That is fair. <laughs> best, I can, best I can do is two, I would buy a Coke at a vending machine and trade it to somebody for this game. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried the new Monster Energy drinks. I know that you were curious about that. You t- mm-hmm. You're talking about vending machines. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've tried one of them, at least. Um, I got two new flavors out, zero calories. Mm, yeah. One of them's mango. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. It's 10 calories. So they're cheating a little bit. Okay, Zero sugar, right. though. <laughs> Dave's going to have a little bit of calories and energy drinks. <sighs> man, but then I get that punchline. Oh, man, <laughs> that's like 250 or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But it's good. It's Hawaiian punch, but in energy drink form. Yeah. <laughs> and also, had the new. have you tried the – you don't do energy drinks probably, right? It, it, it From depends. time to time? Yeah, time to time. Have you had the Coke ones? The Coke no, Zero ones? No, I've been meaning to, but I have not. I, for the first time, had um, the Coke Zero Cherry Energy. I'm interested in that one. It's not bad. It yeah. is, if you like balls, if you like Gorana based <laughs> yeah. If you like balls. If you like balls, yeah. like you do, you dirty bottom. For, <laughs> for, for humor only. <laughs> <laughs> if you if, you, if you're a chuckle bottom, <laughs> you'll love you'll a love chuckle Jared. bottom. <laughs> Can we just go ahead and rename the show Chuckle Bottoms? <laughs> chuckle Bottom, <laughs> Ha Ha Tops and Chuckle Bottoms. Did, did you come up with that term? That's really good. That's yeah. Oh, that's that's a that's a dry tubs original. That's that is fucking gold. That's a joke of the show. <laughs> that's good shit right there. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's very Gorana flavored. You definitely taste it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which is weird I'm combined familiar. with like a cola, yeah. <laughs> cola flavor. It's still, it was still fine. You know, I would get another one, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Okay. See, we need to bring back soda jerks. You're talking about all these energy drinks. I almost did. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, then yeah, I forgot yeah. that I needed to do that. <laughs> and then I remembered having it when we were talking. So I was like, I'll just do it now. <laughs> Like, I'm working from home next week, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, I haven't, I haven't gotten better news. Like, I mean, it was just like, the Tadbog prom just got better somehow. <laughs> Going to an office for certain jobs is just fucking dumb. It is dumb. Like, I get that you should be available for if you have to go off-site. Sure. Sure. But like, Or if a it's client dumb. needs to come in. Yeah. Set and up, then you schedule that, and you're there when you up need and to go be. there. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You would think it's like, why would a business want you to use their electricity? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you no, know? no, I'll pay for it. It's and fine. their internet, like, yeah. it's yeah, totally. You can. I'll use my electricity, my internet. I'll drink my water. I'll use my toilet. So much less that you have to spend, yep. and I'm super happier. Yep. <laughs> yep. Fuck yeah. Because it's like I can work. On my own, like, schedule, I can, like, I'm kind of tempted to just get as much as I possibly humanly can get done tomorrow. And then (laughs) then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, just play, yeah, do nothing. (laughs) Unfortunately, it doesn't work out like that. But, I don't know. I got a quiz. Hell yeah, let's do it. I got a quiz. Let's do it to it. From one one prime inquisitor over the seas, uh, Ross Rachel Green. It is entitled, Space... It's been my boy's birthday, and one thing he wanted was a big toy rocket ship, which is awesome and exactly the sort of toy my parents couldn't afford to buy six-year-old RRG. I like that. Mm. I like RRG. Mm. You down with RRG? (laughs) You You know know me. me. (laughs) So obviously I play with it a lot more than he does, and so space quiz or whatever. Question one. Mm -hmm. Are you ready, Tyler? Mm -hmm. Yes. Question one. 
In this game, you played the last surviving member of an assault team fighting the evil machine. An assault team fighting the evil machine. Machine. And machine is capital M. Are these games that we have covered? <laughs> Chrono Trigger fighting the mammon machine? The mammon machine. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if we've covered these games or if these are just general, because he doesn't say. <laughs> he doesn't say. Fighting the machine. The evil machine. And machine is capitalized. It's a it's a proper, it's a proper noun. In this game, you play the last surviving member of an assault team fighting the evil machine. See, see Colonel Trigger doesn't make sense and it's the no. last surviving member. So you're the last, you're one. So is it like R type, Gradius? Ooh. Maybe it is. I'm trying to remember. I think it's in space, yeah. right? That's the thing. Space, yes. All right. Which one do you want to go with, though? In our type, you're fighting more organic alien life. Well, no, it's not always true. Yeah, because you got those heads and stuff, right? Yeah. I think it's some kind of space shooter. Um, let's go. Gra- let's go earlier. Let's go Gradius. Then. Gradius. All right, logging it in. Gradius. It is a uh, super Turrican too. <laughs> I feel way better, way better about not knowing the answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, next question. This game is based. Actually, I'm gonna look up Flopsy. I'm gonna see what they rate. I'm gonna see what they rate Super, Super Turrican Two. Right, the, gonna be right good. the fuck now. I it's gonna be it's good. Gonna be like four it's gonna out be out good. Five stars. Spoilers uh, in the Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the SNES Library, 1991 through 1998, by Pat Contry, courtesy of Master Mold Mike. Flopsy gives Foreman for real two and a half stars. Okay, now that that is okay. over, Super, which is too bullshit. high, too yeah. high, too high. That that indicates everyone that it is an seems like game. Super Turrican Two. I know, except I for thought us. it was poor, and you thought it was disastrous. I, I thought it was disastrous. Yeah. yeah, but for some reason, everybody else seems to fucking have boners over it. I, I, I need to revisit boners it. so pure and so hard they wouldn't even fuck their friends. For and years. it wouldn't even be funny. Yeah, yeah, it'd be funny. <laughs> I do need to revisit it, just like I need to revisit Kirby's Dream Course, because those are the two games where people have been like, "That's not good." Those are good games. You guys were wrong. Those were good games. All right, Super Star Wars, that's not it. Super Street Fighter, that's not it. Super Troll Islands, looking forward to that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Super Tennis, we did that. Super Strike Eagle, Bandit Splashed, did that. Super Turrican 2, yeah, four and a half stars. <sighs> Out of five? Damn near perfect game, yeah. Damn no, near perfect game. No, I have no, I don't have that good memory to that game. I got to revisit it. I'm going to have to. Mm. All right, anyway, next question. This game is based on a sci-fi western for canonically the fourth, but chronologically the first in a series of movies. This game is based on a sci-fi western for canonically the fourth, but chronologically the first in a series of movies. Oh, that's uh, Super Star Wars. Oh, good call. Wow. Good uh, call. Okay. Um, what episode number do you think Super Star Wars was? One, 111. It is 21... Super Ooh. Star Wars. Yeah, it was, on, it was on IGN's list. Wow. And uh, man, I'm going to have to resist the urge to not look up every, every single, single game, game. <laughs> in, in Flopsy <laughs> because, like, I really want to know what they gave Super Star Wars. Yep, yep, yep. <sighs> uh, next question. In the space shooter, the Japanese boss for stage two fired huge sperm, but every other releases it fired eyeballs. Probably our type. Probably R Type Three, yeah. right? Yep, yeah. the third strike or whatever. Yeah, locking it in. R Type Three, the third lightning. You uh, were very, very okay. close to getting the full title. Uh, what episode number do you think that was? Forty-five. Oh man, it was forty-two. That was really oh. fucking close, dude. Uh, next question: This game stars a burrowing uh, invertebrate in a robot suit. That's Earthworm Jim. Fifty. Earthworm Jim, you say it's fifty. 54 mm. Earthworm Jim. Mm. Uh, I picked up a box copy of Earthworm Jim at the expo. That's nice. I wanted to get something. I wanted to get a boxed game, mm-hmm. like as like a souvenir of the of the and expo. That was pretty close to to, to recommended value. It was it was a good deal. Yeah, yeah it was okay. it was under, not by a lot. Oh, but okay. if you include That's shipping on it, it was definitely it was definitely a good Sweet. deal. Without shipping, it was still a, like a few dollars mm-hmm. under. Uh, they were really priced re- uh, very well, uh, mm. and I should have spent more time at that vendor because they did have like a buy three get one, and I could have just loaded up on like four dollar carts and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't because I wanted to play games and yeah. stuff. Uh, next question: This game is also a uh, is also based 
I'll see. This game is also a based sci-fi Western movie series, but was not based on one of the movies. So it's a it's a movie series, but the game was not based on the movies. That's what it seems like. And a sci-fi Western. I, the, the argument could be made for Super Star Wars once more. Because <laughs> the game, what happens in the games, do not line up with what happened in the movies. Oh, I went to that giant, super <laughs> huge ship that the Sand People had. Enormous. The size of a hundred men space... Uh, actually, that's a sand, the crawler, a sand job, crawler. The, the Jawas, they do have a scene in there, but they don't do any fighting in there. Uh, also, they don't fight a giant sarlacc in the movie like they do in the game. <laughs> so, uh, shit, I have, I don't know, man. Alien Three, that is absolutely based on the movie. That's pretty high, but sure, eh, that can't be it. Uh, I'm I'm fine with it. Alien Three, Alien locking it three. in. Star Wars: Shadows of the Empire. For the N64. All right, fair enough. Yeah, it is fair, fair enough. That was episode 204. Next question. I slide by your shenanigans, Ross. It was That's that fair. was a good one. That yep. was a yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that was a rope a dope. Yep. That was a boxing <laughs> thing, right? I've heard that used sure. before. <laughs> that was a real one-two punch, wasn't it? Uh, next question. This game is based on a film and takes place in cyberspace. Fuck you, it counts. Shadowrun? I was going to say Lawnmower Man. Lawnmower Man. Okay, go for it. Ron- Lawnmower Man. Yep. But Shadowrun also applies. Yep, yeah, takes place in sh- cyberspace. Not entirely, just little bits of it. Lawnmower Man is far more in cyberspace. Mm, Shadowrunners can have a little cyberspace. A little cyberspace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let's do Lawnmower Man. I feel, be- I feel yeah, good about I that Yeah, I do one. too. I do too. What episode number do you think it was? 234. 305, The Lawnmower Man. Nice, nice. They had a cartridge of that at the expo. (laughs) (laughs) And I literally recoiled. (laughs) Going to have to buy it one day. (laughs) Yeah. Not today. (laughs) Not not today, (laughs) Satan. What what do we tell The Lawnmower Man? (laughs) (laughs) Not today. Uh, Next question. In this game, a popular cartoon character fights aliens in ridiculous ways. That would be Bart. Versus the Space Mutants. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, not because we haven't played the Daffy Duck one yet where he's in space. Duck Dodgers? Duck Dodgers. What episode number do you think? Uh, Bart, the Simpsons, Bart versus the Space Mutants. 370. Locking it in. It is 315. Okay. Bart versus the Space Mutants. Next question. This game featured space aliens trying to take over the world, and the star of the game recorded a soundbite for a fan of the show. That fan of the show was one Duke Sithost, a.k.a. William. Yep. Uh, Doom. Duke, Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem. Oh, yeah, it was Duke Nukem. You're we right. Haven't done, Doom. We haven't done Doom yet. You're right. It's on there. We'll get it to it. It is on there. <laughs> it was my Secret Santa gift, so <laughs> I could definitely play that on that beautiful red card. One cartridge. of the worst ports of Doom for the Super Nintendo, but that's yeah. what I've heard. Um, it's a good thing we've already done Super Noah's Ark 3D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're, we're ready for we're it. We're ready. We'll verse. Yeah. I think there's a Wolfenstein port for the SNES too, oh, as well. Man. Yeah. <laughs> man, the, what I love about those games on a, on a 16-bit controller. That's always how you want to play <laughs> Doom. Uh, what episode number do you think it was? 343. 463, Duke Nukem, mm. 3D. Next question. The last boss of this platformer, which was the first of this series on a handheld, is fought in space and quacks when you shoot him. Mario, six golden coins? Oh, yeah. But wait. Or the Super Mario Land. It might be Super Mario Land. Super Mario Land had the alien in the end of it. Super yeah. Mario Land. You're probably uh, right. Not Topanga, but it sounds like Topanga. <laughs> what was the boss name? I can't remember. Anyway, kind of Topanga. I'm good with Super Mario Land. Super you Mario lock Land. Lock it in? All yeah. right. Locked in. It is, in fact, Super Mario Land. Mm. Well done, Tyler. Uh, what episode number do you think that was? 444. 471. Next question. This old school, and it's spelled correctly, this old school style RPG was funded on Kickstarter and much to everyone's amazement was released after five years. Cosmic Star Heroine? Ooh, I bet that's I bet that's right. What episode number do you think it was? 502. 479. Mm-hmm. Cosmic Star Heroine. Good pull, dude. That was the last question, but there is a bonus here. Mm. It says just for funzos, you get to be an animal for a day. What do you pick? 
Easy. Dolphin. Next. Mm, dolphins do enjoy having sex recreational. Mm-hmm. You're a dolphin too. It'd be funny if you bought them for me as we're, we're both dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we chose to spend our day. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go seduce humans. Oh, wouldn't it, it would be fun to be two dolphins that just try to seduce humans all day? Well, there was that one, like, started out as a scientist, fell in love with the dolphin that he would make, make love to. I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. But and then that one also raped Hank thing. Hill. Remember that? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Rub its belly until it gets to the red spot and then fucking unleash its rape machine. <laughs> Thank you, Ross, for the quiz. Thank you, Ross. It was a very, very good quiz that you fucking surprised us with uh, Shadows of the Empire. Yeah. It's a name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> a long time. The alien from Super Mario Land was named Tatanga. Tatanga. So there we go. Right. I had to look that up. It's bothering the shit out of me. <laughs> Now that that's done, I can work from home. Sweet. <laughs> I thought that's pretty good. It's pretty comprehensive. Got any things? Got any things you want to do? I've got any got things any... you want to say? Um, um, do we need to do? A, we need to figure out what we're going to be talking about next week. All right. Well, okay. So here's the thing. Uh, we have a a crossover planned. So we're going to buck the randomizer, and surely we will get fucked with it. So I'm going to go ahead and say it now. Hey, randomizer. The plan is to do a crossover with the Cape Podcasters. Tadpog X Cape Podcasters. About Batman Forever, which is a truly garbage game. I never played the game. And the first Batman movie I ever saw in completion. Were you getting like a handy or something when you saw it? Or No, I mean, I, no, I didn't get a handy, so I watched all of it. Oh, I never watched I Batman I, or Batman I, Returns. I, I just think bits I and pieces see. of it. The first Batman I ever sat down and watched, beginning to end, was Batman Forever. You poor man. <laughs> you poor man. When I hear two completion, I absolutely think about coming every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so knowing that randomizer, so either the we work out our scheduling and next week is Batman Forever, or we don't, and it's this randomizer game. So we go ahead and open up spread wide for the randomizer to fuck us for oh, Bucky open tradition. Wide for Chunky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, now you see, there's a fighting game called Balls, and in that fighting game on the screen in the uh -huh, background, yep. it says, open wide for Chunky. It's fucking awful. So there we go. Terrible. Now everyone's on the same page. No one listened to it. <laughs> so uh, I'll go ahead and grab this uh, batter up uh, bat. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, man, I'm going to rest of this in the ground, point my nose on a hole in a gaping open direction. Man, your no no hole looks like a fish gasping uh, when it's in a boat. Yeah. That's weird. I understand it, though. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, randomizer, the randomizer has certainly gaped us well with yep. this game. <laughs> no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. 557. Ooh. And uh, uh, tease? It's Super Battleship. Okay, let's roll again. We got, we've done that one. Boop, 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 boop. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, stop. Six, 17. Oh, <laughs> okay. Six, 17. I should have stopped at six. You looked really like that was like was your like, jam. Wow, all six. right. Six, that could be anything. <laughs> that could be Super Battleship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, six, 17. The V's? W's? The T's. T's. Um, what do you tease? I'll give you a hint. Uh -huh. The T is the name of the publisher and maybe the developer as well. Tizo. <laughs> Tecmo. Tecmo Bowl. Super Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl 2. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Tecmo. Tell me if you've heard of this game. Okay. okay. All right. I, I have a feeling that you might have just because of your history. And your um and the kind of games that you like. Mm -hmm. Tecmo Secret of the Stars. Never heard of it. It is an RPG. And it is kind of an infamous RPG. That's how I know of it. Never heard of it. Okay. Yeah, Tecmo uh Secret of the Stars. Well, it's cool that maybe so either we do that next week or we have two weeks to put it down because Batman Forever ain't gonna take long. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't want to like, I don't want to like put any like opinions in your head, like from the beginning. I don't uh -huh. know that Tecmo's Secret of the Stars is a game that we're going to want to finish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it might be. It might be. It could be. It could be, but I don't know. From things that I've heard, it, it's one of those games where it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Tecmo's Secret of the Stars or Batman Forever. We'll see.
Uh, let's see. So you missed the next episode. Wherever you want to find all our episodes, we're on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spotify. 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 Look at that. Not an exclusive Spotify podcast. Not exclusive to Spotify. Uh, yeah, yeah, not we're not that, that cool. Not making those Spotify bucks. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, we're paying to be on Spotify. Yeah, they're not paying us. Right. We're paying them. Yeah, we're essentially giving them money that they then collect and then distribute to better podcasters. So good. I'm glad I'm supporting Last Podcast on the Left on Spotify. I like that. That's how I can feel good about it. <laughs> and my BIM, or the besties. The besties, the besties is Spotify are exclusive. Spotify exclusive, yeah. Uh, what else do we talk about? Uh, we're uh we're on Patreon. We're on, we are on Palace. Patreon. So yeah, so uh, we talked a lot about the Piggy Palace. So I I have run a Call of Cthulhu game. Which, Call of uh, Cthulhu is a tabletop role playing game where uh-huh. you play a team of investigators uh, exploring uh, eldritch horrors. Eldritch horrors. So I started off the first one. I like to base them on serial killers. So serial the first killers, one is based someone who off kills for pleasure uh, multiple times frequently. <laughs> yeah. So the first one is about the son of Sam, uh, 10 episodes total. And that is on our regular stream. So then I want to do the second part of that series, but it is far more graphic than the first one. So we made that patron exclusive. That is called The Piggy Palace. So you can listen to 15 episodes of The Piggy Palace on Patreon.com. Just kicking a dollar. It's really good. It is worth it. It is it is absolutely worth your dollar. I can say that with one hundred percent confidence. Uh, if you're if you're into actual plays, you you'll you will like this. But besides that, we have game. a lot of other episodes on there. We've got one we have my oldest stepdaughter on, Brandy Jr., and we talk about all the teen slang. We have one where we a video where we recast all of Sweden if they were in a movie. We have us eating one chip challenges and yeah. multiple times. Yeah. Bruh, Pure capsaicin, which was kind of bum capsaicin, because the one chip challenge is much hotter, mm-hmm. and tons of other uh, other actual plays. Like everyone is John, yep. and then all calls episodes. We yep. have ones where we're just sitting down talking about bullshit. So it's just for a dollar, a lot of extra content on there that we're 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 proud of. It's a, it's it's casual, yeah. but we're proud of it. Yeah, the Jasmine story is on there. The jazz. If you want to hear my grossest <laughs> sexual story. Period, hands down, that usually makes people gag. That's on there. Fifty Shades of Yellow, the Jasmine story. <laughs> we should have with a ch- Taryn. <laughs> we should have a challenge where it's like if you get through that episode without gagging or laughing, then you we'll- get a spoonful of Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you some things that people have sent us. <laughs> uh, there's also so. So we are Tadpog. There's a Tadpog Facebook group. Mm-hmm. So we put our episode posts. Mm. A lot of good memeage up there. Thank you, uh, meme meme god Cody Prickett. I take a lot of stuff from him. He does very good. Thank you, uh, meme goddess Leslie Williams. I take a lot of shit from her. They're they're good stuff. We post good memes on there. You do. Um, I do. That's all you I do. Yeah. You, you send me some. You send me some and I post Yeah, if them. I see something that's funny, yeah. I'll send it to you. But that's not always necessarily something that I like think would be a good post. Curated, yeah. So like, what has what that has done is you. I now don't send you things that are X-rated anymore, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it of, used to be pretty much like... Pretty much all hey, like... Hey, you coming over and yeah. then X-rated thing. <laughs> right. Just like a photograph of like a skinny dude fucking a fat dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you get it right. This, yeah. this is you. Yeah, they're watching. Ha ha! Very funny. <laughs> they're watching Flipper. Uh, so, but if you want to like get invested in the deeper, darker side of the community, that's Tapong Nation. That's where all the fucked up shit goes. Stuff you don't want your grandma to see. But if you're a good boy who mm. wants more more Tadpog content, that's on the Discord. Or if you just want to spam honk emotes, that is also That's on also the a Tadpog ch- or a yep. Discord channel. Want to talk about Nate's hedgehog panties? That's also on Discord. <laughs> Bit.ly slash Tadpog Discord. Love it. And, uh, hey, we have shirts. We have the regular Tadpog logo shirt. We have Dave-style chicken shirt from a dream that I had a long time ago. And then we have Tad Dogs, which Nate Glines bought one of those. I didn't think anybody owned a Tad Dog shirt, but he does, and I loved it. Serper Graham has one as well. Oh, Graham, all right. The rarest, if you want to cut that rare Tad Dog shirt, (laughs) buy a Tad Dog shirt. Yep. Two people have them, and that's it. And they're, like, honestly the best illustrated the best shirt that we have. The best design. It is. That's on shirts.tadpog.com. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, let's see, like if you want to send us something, I'll say it again. Tabbox Studios, care of Nicole Nance, PO Box 3785, Purdue, Kentucky 4202. Mm-hmm. We have a voicemail. Sometimes we take calls. We try to. We ran late. Uh, it's very late because we talked about the prom forever. So if you want to call us, 270 885 <laughs> You sure? When you said downers, did you mean cocaine? <laughs> you remember that time when Tyler outroed for twenty nine minutes <laughs> in rapid succession? You're like me, with ultimate Nintendo guy. If, if I library. still want to have sex, not I gotta make this fast. <laughs> well, that I can assure you that window's closed for me, so I'll just drag this on out as long as I possibly can. <laughs> The only sex you're having tonight if it's really funny for someone else to walk in on. <laughs> you're not you are not wrong. It is way <laughs> past Nikki's bedtime. Uh then we talked about the Patreon. But let's uh let's let's pull up that Patreon. Yeah, do we have any we have any uh we have any people to thank? Any new donors or increased donations? So oh we've had quite the boost. I know. Quite it's been, the boost. It's been amazing. Damn. After they listen to this episode, though, they they might take it back. They they might take might it back. Might take it back. Or like they'll take it back and be like, I want pictures of that funny fucking, and then you get more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, five thousand dollar Patreon goal. Pictures of funny fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So I think I talked about Joy Webster's increase, Nathan Eaton's increase, uh, the two dollars a month pledged by an anonymous Brett. So, uh, also a new, a new, uh, new donor, Mel. Well, okay. Well, I, we know her, Mel Webster, which is Joy Webster's wonderful wife, mm-hmm. has, has, has pledged. Thank you very much. She made some real awesome, uh, jello shots for Ted Bog Brown. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. So good. Mm-hmm. So, except for the Malort ones. The Malort ones were awful. <laughs> didn't have any of those. Oh, I did. Didn't oh, any, I did. Didn't have any of those. Oh. Uh, and then a big increase by Paul Anderson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, and then we lost Norma Lester, which I don't know if that's a real person or not. <laughs> I'm assuming it's not because that donation did not last very long. Of <laughs> <laughs> uh, executive producers, we do have some executive producers. This show has been executive produced by Usurper Grimm, God Emperor Alex Pena, Cousin David Galino, Laud Mulaney Dennis, Platinum Member Brett Miller, The Eightfold Daniel Abernathy, Master Cycle Baron Kevin Link, Executive Producer Dig Dougie, and Drinksmith Joey Webster. Hell yeah. Thanks. Thank you. It really, really means a lot. So our theme song is Moves by Sycamore Drive. Link to that track found the charts at Tadbog.com, as can our Twitter and Instagram at Tadbog underscore podcast, which I nearly forgot. How do you want to close this out, Dave? Uh, like two dolphins trying to seduce people and having sex with them. All right. So until next time, tropical Capricorn. Oh, oh. <laughs> the, the hole is my, the O oh and corn is my dolphin hole. <laughs> my dolphin hole. My dolphin hole. Stick it in any dolphin hole you want. Ooh. Ooh, any? I any got, dolphin hole? Yeah, I got my, my dolphin pussy hole. <laughs> <laughs> my dolphin butthole. Always drink this much, please. My dolphin <laughs> mouth and my dolphin blowhole. Oh, dude, I would not go anywhere near a dolphin mouth. <laughs> Got a lot of razor sharp teeth. No lips. On this. <laughs> no lips. No just, lips. All teeth. <laughs> just, just teeth. And then what? What looks sort of like a um, a flashlight of dolphin tongue and just, just, just throat meat. Throat meat. Come, come get my dolphin throat meat. I do like some good throat meat. There is that, I guess. There's a lot. There's a lot of dolphin beak to get through, though. <laughs> yeah, you better be pretty big. Better have a giant fucking dick if you want this throat meat. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Lexington Steel can get this throat meat. Thanks for listening. First time listener hearing us talk about dolphin throat meat fucking. All right, the throat meat is the meat that's at the very back of the throat. Probably. I mean, because I've seen where they open up their mouth to get the fish, and it looks like it's just like a lot of throat meat. Just a lot of throat meat. A lot of throat meat. Throat meat seems like the discount deli. Like, you know, we got throat meat. <laughs> we, turkey? We, the, we got throat meat? We got turkey tails and dolphin throat meat. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want turkey what? for, you bougie fuck? What are you buying? <laughs>